Well, it's New Year's Eve and the Carolina Thunderbirds are ready for the final game of a four-game stretch against the Columbus River Dragons. They've dropped the last two here in this series, but now here on New Year's Eve in front of what is expected to be another sellout crowd, the Thunderbirds are back in action with some reinforcements coming along the way as this short man at Thunderbirds roster has battled each of the last two nights. A 5-3 loss on Friday and a 4-3 loss last night. Had a chance to tie it there late, but Carolina not able to find an equalizer across the final 37 seconds as Columbus are able to take a the first two games and also take a lead in the Continental Division of the FPHL. It's New Year's Eve and it's great to have you along for the ride. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. A very happy New Year's to you all and from wherever you may be joining us here on your Sunday evening. But it should be another good matchup here tonight between these two sides. Every game this year across the first five meetings has been competitive between the two sides. Carolina taking a couple overtime and shootout victories back a month ago. They had the 6-3 win last Saturday here at home. But now Columbus, well, full staff Columbus has been able to come in and they have been able to take the past two games. Steve Harrison's not discouraged. You'll hear from him here in just a little bit. And he saw last night, you saw Dawson Baker. He went out in the first period. Braden Crow suspended before that for his actions on Friday's night game when he already had Joe Kennedy and Peter Banachik both out due to injury and illness. So this short staff Thunderbirds team has gone out there and they put shifts in though. They've been able to stay competitive and stay in every game here this weekend. Now they're trying to do more of the same here tonight. But earlier today Today, Steve Harrison brought in another reinforcement. He brought jo he brought Josh Keplinger in last night, and today he brings in Victor Grabenikov, who's going to be making his 2023 debut here for the Thunderbirds on New Year's Eve. He's on defense here this evening. Keplinger is on the is, is back in the lineup here tonight as well. But Steve Harrison's looking for a jump here tonight from his guys, and it's going to be a tough test. It's a very good Columbus team, but Carolina, they're going to have to try to power through it here tonight. It's that mental factor that will play a big part here in this one. But we're just getting started on what should be a pretty fun evening here at the Annex. Anthony Batrico, former Thunderbirds gold sender. He'll join me for the second period during the first intermission. We'll hear from one of our owners, Barry Soskin, as well as Kerry Ross during the second intermission as well. It's New Year's Eve here at the Annex and not much better place to be on your New Year's Eve. Carolina Columbus series finale coming up just past the bottom of the hour here on Thunderbirds TV and WTOB. We'll take a time out and hear from the head coach, Steve Harrison. Hear his thoughts about last night and heading into this evening as well. Just getting underway here on Thunderbirds pregame. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Thank you. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. It takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right. Just like who we What's up everybody? My name is Zach Taylor and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over setting up at different events. This year I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds and we're going to be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, Swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you. Hope you have a great day and go birds. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. 
Back here on Thunderbirds pregame, we're getting you ready for Carolina and Columbus, the final game of this four-game stretch between the two sides, being joined, as always, by the head coach, Steve Harrison. And, Coach, first off, a, a happy new year to you. And uh, now your team coming into today, uh, two straight losses, short man uh, in Columbus on Friday, then last night a 4-3 to three loss. Um, but now another chance to try to be able to get the points back and, and come away with the split here in this four-game set. Um, but last night you come away with a close loss. Uh, you had a late push there. Um, but last night, uh, what, what was kind of the case for your team? Well, first of all, Happy New Year to all the fans and, and, and everybody who supports us. And uh, we hope they have a, a wonderful new year. And uh, as far as we're concerned right now, you know, we're battling. And, and uh, we, we've lost a lot of important people here in the last three or four days. And uh, the, the guys have put their best foot forward. And uh, it, it's... Uh, that's not a back pocket excuse. We, 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 we've still got to do things the right way, and uh, we're going to battle here tonight, and uh, we're going to bring another guy in tonight, and, and, and hopefully he can help us too. And uh, We've just got to be uh, cognizant of, of situations. Last night, you know, we were in a situation where, you know, try to get out of the second period, and the next thing you know, it's 2-2 hockey game. So uh, the more and more we're learning, we're learning as a group, and, and I'm excited about this group here that uh, we're learning every day, and, and you know, come April, uh, we're going to have a lot of knowledge on how to play the game right. And uh, right now, as I said, we're a little short, but uh, we're going to put our best foot forward here tonight. And uh, we, we've got to play tight, tight, and, and, and not give them the opportunities or not give them the situations that uh, they can be uh, successful. Now, you go into that third period, tied it to, they come away with two goals early on there. Uh, what, what kind of led to that, and what, what do you see from, from Columbus a lot for them to take that lead? Well, you, you know, whenever you get scored on late in a, in a period, and, and, and as I said, we've used a lot of energy in two games. So uh, at the end of the second period, I, uh, if they don't score there, I think we come out with a little more jump. I, I think we came out a little flat, and, and they took advantage of it. And uh, they got a great hockey team, and uh, the, I, I give kudos to them. They, they, they've got a really good hockey team, and we've gone toe-to-toe, shorthanded, and, 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 and taken them right to the limit here in two games, so I, I'd expect nothing less than tonight, and we're going to give our best effort. And but uh, you, you you can't those goals a lot of times come back and, and, and bite you emotionally, and uh, I think that's what happened in the third. Now, when we talked yesterday, you said that Columbus had come out. They had come out quickly in the first two games of this set. You guys came out last night, and you were able to come away with a goal early on. What was your message to the team when you guys were heading out to the ice? Well, you know, it was game 21, and I said uh, we got to have better starts every night. So uh, finally in game 21, we decided we were going to have a good start. So, uh, But we did, We uh, and I give the guys credit. They, they, they came out and, and, uh, and, and played hard, and we went at them. And uh, as I said, the situation it looked really good for us. And uh, again, we can't sustain. That, that, that pressure like we were doing last night, and uh, I think it took its toll a little bit on us in the second period. Now, with your team being short manned here over these past two nights, and now going into a third of a three and three, how much does that change your your uh, logic or your your thought when you're going to shifts and you're trying to see what these guys have? Well, we're we're going really short. Uh, I don't know if you noticed last night a couple of times, uh, you know, 15 seconds we changed or I changed one player, and uh, so we're we're going to go really short here tonight. And uh, you know, if things uh, we can't get in offensively, then then we're going to have to uh, uh, play strong defensively in certain situations and. Uh, uh, if, if we have to get the puck out, we dump the puck out. So we're just going to have to play a smart, uh, type of, more like a road type game, uh, uh, as I said, after three and three. And uh, just play our game and uh, uh, stick to our system and play together and we'll be in fine shape. Josh Kaplinger returned last night. What did you see from him? Oh, he looked good last night. Uh, you know, a little rusty at certain situations, but that that's uh, that's understandable. But uh, uh, he's a good hockey player. He's been around for a long time, so his knowledge and his experience really helped last night. And uh, hopefully he can c continue to bring that experience for us and, uh, you know, uh, just add to the mixture of what we have now. Well, Coach, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck to you this evening. Thanks very much. That's the head coach, Steve Harris. We've got more to come on Thunderbirds pregame. Carolina and Columbus series finale coming up in just a little bit. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one-stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score. 
your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersap.allenton.com. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee it up indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. It's the third of three here this weekend. Great to have you along for the ride as Thunderbirds pregame continues to roll along. Brendan Riley with you here on your New Year's Eve. Great to have you along from wherever you may be. Last night, though, Carolina still short, man. Josh Keblinger, he did come back, but Carolina, they ended up dropping that one last night by a score of 4-3. to three. And last night, it saw Carolina, they jumped out to an early one nothing lead. It was Jan Salak being able to pick up his 13th goal of the season at the 3 27 mark in the first period made it one to nothing in favor of the Thunderbirds. Josh Petrantoni, though, later tied it up at one as the two sides went to the second inter or the first intermission that is tied up at one in the second. Jacob Schnapp on a deflection at the 1353 mark was able to give Carolina the advantage once again, two to one. But it would be that lead would vanish with just 25 seconds remaining in the second period on a five on three opportunity it was Kyle Moore being able to beat Mario Cavalieri tying us up at two and then in the third Columbus came out and they came out quickly getting two goals over the first six minutes the first one from Austin Doe at the 327 mark made it three to two and then what would be the eventual game winner Kyle Moore his second of the night at the 535 mark in that third period gave the River Dragons the lead 4-2 to two before Carolina on the pattern play an extra attacker. They got their second 6-on-4 goal and the second in a night in a row after they got one back on Friday night in Columbus. This time it was Clay Keeley getting his first FBHL goal of his career with assists from Gus Ford and Yuri Pastuco with 37 seconds left, but Carolina was not able to find one more as it was Columbus taking the victory last night to move into first in the Continental Division of the FBHL as they have 47 points. Carolina with 44. Both teams coming today. Carolina record of 16-5 in O. Columbus 15-2 and 2. And so Carolina work to do here tonight. They do have some reinforcements as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast. Dawson Baker also a game time decision here tonight after he left with just under five minutes to go in the first period last night. But Carolina looking for a response. The first time this season that Carolina's lost two games in a row and they're trying to snap that losing skid right here against the River Dragons here on New Year's Eve at the end. So we'll take a look at the Thunderbirds on the other side of this timeout as Thunderbirds pregame continues in a few minutes. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Scott Brandon with DS Brandon Plumbing. I have 30 years of plumbing experience in the triad. DSBPCO at triad.rr.com. Proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. Go Birds. Hi, I'm Wake Wagner with Wagner Appliance. Proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. 
message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! Back here in Winston-Salem at the Annex, we're getting ready for Carolina and Columbus, the final of this four-game stretch between the two sides. And it's time to take a look at the Carolina Thunderbirds here this evening coming in to this matchup between Carolina and Columbus. They will have Josh Geplinger, Gus Ford, and Dawson Baker comprising of the first line here tonight. Baker, though, still questionable. He is a game-time decision as that per the head coach, Steve Harrison. He was out there for warm -up, so they have to see how he'll feel and if he'll be able to go here tonight, here in this one. But Keplinger and Ford are in. Dominic Dumas, Jan Salak, and Yuri Pastuka. They make up the second line with John Batita, Nate Keeley, and Jacob Schnott, the third line. They are getting the start this evening for Steve Harrison's sign. James Former, Clay Keeley, Justin O'Valley, Justin Bioni, and Victor Gravenikov. Gravenikov returning to Carolina. He did not play in the first 21 games here this season, but with the Injuries in the call-ups over the past week or so here for Steve Harrison's sign. He calls in Victor Grubenikov, who's going to be starting his sixth season with Carolina in his FPHL career, 143 games play, 17 goals and 46 assists with 63 total points for the Russian native. Mario Cavalieri and Frankie McClendon are the netminders here this evening with Cavalieri getting the second night in a row between the pipes. Last night he saved 36 of 40 shots, and last night was his first loss ever to the Columbus River Dragons. He was very fired up about that after the game. But he's ready to go here tonight for the Thunderbirds here in this one. Carolina coming today with a record of 16-5-0. They're trying to snap this losing skid. It's their longest one so far this season of only two games as Carolina tries to move back into a tie for first with the Columbus River Dragons here tonight. We'll take a look at the Columbus River Dragons on the other side of this timeout. Thunderbirds pregame continues in just a little bit. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hi, I'm Stuart with Pivlin Fish Brewing Company here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I've been proud to be the official craft beer of Carolina Thunderbirds since 2018. Be sure to find us on draft or in cans at the games or come down and see us We're here in downtown Winston-Salem. Go Birds! Graybrook Technologies is located in downtown Winston-Salem near the Dash Stadium. We specialize in automation, integration, and motor control with our team of dedicated engineers, a UL industrial control panel shop, and our warehouse packed with VFDs and components to fabricate the custom controls your company needs. Graybrook is a preferred partner with Danfoss, Siemens, Schneider Square D, and others to bring your project to life with brands you know and trust. Visit our website at graybrook.com or call us at 336-310-9092 to learn more about the array of services we offer. Let's go Birds! Hey Thunderbirds, are you looking for a metal building? Here at Bulldog Steel Structures, we got you covered with multiple garages, barns, and styles you need. Contact us today to get your free quote at 888-551-2156. Or visit our website, www.bulldogstillstructures.com and mention the Thunderbirds and we'll give you a flying deal. God bless you. Go, Go Thunderbirds! Thunderbirds. Well, good crowd starting to file in here to the Annex on New Year's Eve. Carolina and Columbus getting ready to go for the fourth time in the past eight days. Carolina 
dropping the last two here last night here at the Annex, and then back on Friday at the Columbus Civic Center. Five to three on Friday, four to three last night. It was a late charge for the Thunderbirds a night ago, but it, Columbus was able to hang on to take all three points last night, They've taken all six points here so far this evening. And Columbus River Dragons, they look like this year, this evening. They will have Taylor Joseph starting in net here tonight. He got the start back on Friday, saved 23 of 26 shots against the Thunderbirds as he makes yet another start here against Carolina this year. 6 0 and one with a 243 goals against average and an 899 save percentage for the netminder. They're led by Justin McDonald, who's got 36 points on the season, 12 goals and 24 assists for McDonald. Donald. On the other side, Cody Wickline. He's got nine nine goals, 19 assists, and 28 points for them. Alexander Jamea, who had a hat trick back on Friday night. He's got 17 goals and nine assists, good for 26 points. Those 17 goals have him tied for second in the FPHL here at for most goals on the season. Carolina and Columbus, they're getting ready to go at it once again here tonight. Carolina, all time in this series. The Thunderbirds lead the series 23 to 17 to four. Here in Winston-Salem, they lead it 12 to seven. Rather, 12, yes, 12 to seven. And last night, Columbus picked up their second straight victory over the Thunderbirds after Carolina had rattled off six straight wins dating back to last season here against the Columbus River Dragons. We're closing in on puck trap. The lights have come down. The players are getting close to get ready to come out. We'll still need to wait and see about Dawson Baker, see if he'll get out there for some shifts here this evening. As Carolina, if he does play, they will have nine forwards, five defensemen in the two net miners in Mario Cavalieri and Frankie McClendon. So a little bit more reinforcements here tonight, hopefully for the Thunderbirds, and hopefully he'll be able to keep going here, and hopefully they'll be able to pick up and snap this losing skid here this evening. It's New Year's Eve here at the Annex. Great crowd filing in here in Winston-Salem. It should be a fun one all night, and we'll take another time out and come back and take a look at the starters and preview this one a little bit more. It's coming up on the other side of this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting-edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top-notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. It takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right. Just like Huey. What's up everybody? My name is Zach Taylor and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over, setting up at different events. This year, I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds. And we're gonna be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, Swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you. Hope you have a great day and go birds. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Here tonight at the Annex. Good crowd starting to file in as this will be the only game here in just a little bit in action here in the FPHL. There is one other game going on right now, and that's between... And actually just went final in a shootout. It was Danbury taking down Binghamton in a shootout. Four to three. They end up winning the shootout. One to nothing. As Danbury, they end up taking the points there. In that one, they take the two points while Binghamton gets one. But Carolina in Columbus getting ready to do battle here this evening. Carolina leading the all-time series 23 to 17 to four. And they're led by the head coach, Steve Harrison. who's 183, 124 in 16 in his career. 16 in five here as the head coach of the Carolina Thunderbirds. All-time against Columbus. 
Columbus. He's 3-2-0 and oh now. And in the FBHL, he just suffered his 50th loss last night. So he has a record of 123-50-16. On the other side, Jerome Bouchard is the head coach for the Columbus River Dragons. 18th season with Columbus for him, where he's 493, 363, and 70 in the FPHL. Remember that they were in the SPHL. They are 125, 59, and 14, and he is 21 and 23 against the Thunderbirds in his career. John Petita, Nate Keeley, and Jacob Schnapp will start along with Clay Keeley and Justin Movalli here this evening. Starting netminder for Carolina's Mario Cavalier. He comes in today making his 20th start on the year, a 14 and 4 record with a 2.10 goals against average, a 9.35 save percentage for him. Last night saved 36 out of 40 shots. Picked up the loss, though, his first loss in his career to the Columbus River Dragons. Frankie McClendon will be the backup. Josh Keplinger and Gus Ford and hopefully Dawson Baker comprise of another line with Dominic Dumas, Jan Salak, and Yuri Pestuka rounding out the forwards. James Farmer, Justin Bioni, and Victor Grabenikov. They are the defensemen here this evening along with Clay Keeley and Justin Movalli. He get the start here tonight. On the other side, for this Columbus River Dragons team. They come into tonight at winners of two straight. Their one loss since Thanksgiving. That 3 2 overtime loss against the Thunderbirds. Their one loss came last Saturday against Carolina in the 6 3 victory, as they have now won eight out of their last nine. They come in red hot, as they, though, have still yet to play a team outside of the Continental Division. All their matchups have come here against the Continental Division. They've had six matchups against Baton Rouge, five against Mississippi. Their trip north comes a little later in the season. They go to Michigan two times coming up in the back half of the season, but they do not face off against any of the likes of Dan Bear. Binghamton. So uh, they've had a pretty good start here this season. So as Carolina, though, as the coaching staff have made their way to their respective benches, the lights have gone down, the red lights have come on, and we uh, are moving in on puck drop. They're on New Year's Eve at the Annex. Carolina in Columbus coming up here in just a few minutes here from the Annex, in which Carolina has a record of... 9-2-0 here this season. Carolina has been dominant here at home. And coming off of a loss, they responded well. But last night, it was Columbus getting the better of them with the 4-3 victory. Carolina coming off of losses in four games. They scored 23 goals here this year. Remember that they scored eight against Binghamton. That was the biggest loss of the year for Binghamton back on it. In the beginning part of December, coming off of that loss against Binghamton back in November, they put up eight against Blue Ridge. So this Carolina team, they know how to respond as the officials take the ice here for the first time this evening. So they've taken it. Columbus, they are waiting at their tunnel. The Thunderbirds in their blackout uniforms here tonight. They are settling in to the tunnel here this evening. Carolina and Columbus. They are getting ready to go here for the final time. Next two times that or next time that these two signs will see each other will be on a Wednesday on January 17th down at the Columbus Civic Center. A special Wednesday edition for Carolina. They return home to face off that weekend against the Mississippi Seawolves for the first time this year. And then Carolina in Biloxi the following weekend. So here on New Year's Eve, Carolina and Columbus battling one more time. They'll battle once in January, and then the two sides don't see each other all the way until March. So it should be an interesting stretch coming up here for the Thunderbirds. Remember, coming up next Saturday, it'll be Port Huron in town for the final two times this season, 7.35 p.m. on Friday evening, 6.05 on Saturday. You can get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or make your way to the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds box office, as they just announced. The Columbus River Dragons, and they make their way onto the ice, led by their netminder this evening, Taylor Joseph. Thunderbirds getting ready to come out as they're lined up in the tunnel. New Year's Eve hockey here at the Annex. Following the game here tonight, the big puck suspending over center ice. Make its way down for the ceremonial. Ball drop, puck drop. Whatever you want to call it. But a fun night about to get underway here from Winston-Salem. First intermission we'll hear from one of our one of the owners. Barry Soskin in the second intermission. We'll also hear from Carrie Ross as well, another one of our owners. And then Anthony Petrico will join the broadcast for the second intermission. And as Carolina makes their way out onto the ice in front of a expected sold-out crowd here tonight. Puck shot between Carolina and Columbus for the final time this weekend. It's on the other side of this timeout. This is Thunderbirds Hockey.
Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Get ready, Winston Sale. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green, and play around on our 18 hall Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Uh, we are just about set for puck drop here from Winston-Salem, Carolina, and Columbus doing it for the final time here this weekend. It's time to turn over to our public dress announcer, Jose Bain.
our national anthem here at the Annex this evening, and we are set for puck drive between Carolina and Columbus for the final time here in 2023. Not the final time this season, but in the final time here in this year. Carolina comes in today at 16-5-0, Columbus 15-2-2. Columbus with 47 points on the year in first in the Continental Division, Carolina in second with the 44 here in 2023-2024. Carolina, they lead the all-time series 23-17-4 here at home. They lead the series. 12 to 7. They're led by Steve Harrison, who is a 183, 124, and 16 record all time in his career, 16 and 5, here in his first season at the helm for the Carolina Thunderbirds. The Columbus River Dragons are led by Jerome Bouchard, 493, 363, and 70 in his 18th season with Columbus in the FPHL. He's got a 124, 50. Uh, 125, 59, and 14 record is 21 and 23 all time against the Thunderbirds. Carolina in their blackout uniforms here this evening. With John Batita, Justin Movalli, Clay Keeley, Nate Keeley, and Jacob Schnott, Mario Cavalieri, the netminder, Alexander Jemayev on the other side, Alex Storjahan, Nathan Balkwill, Cody Wickline, and Kirk Underwood with the netminder, Taylor Joseph. We're set for puck drop here on New Year's Eve. A happy early New Year's, and it's great to have you along for the ride. We're underway here on a Sunday night at the Annex. Settle in for what should be a fun 60 minutes of action here this evening. It starts with Columbus walking right down the main street. A quick shot is blocked by Clay Keeley. It comes out near sign. John Batita chases after it at the red line. Tries to dump it in. Intercepting it, though, is Underwood as he lofts it over towards Clay Keeley. Just underway here in the final of three this weekend. Columbus has taken the first two. Nate Keeley, a quick shot. It's blockered away. Puck bounces back out almost right to him. Said it comes to the other side. Walking in, Wickline will dump it in and chase after it in the far corner. James Farmer trying to get a touch to it with Josh Petrantonio. Schnott whacks at it. For near side, here's Doe centering pass in front. Takes a deflection wide. Nate Keeley gets the loose puck. And clears the zone before he takes a big hit from Petrantonio. Doe, quick shot. Andreoli who missed the last two games. He's in the lineup here tonight for Columbus. Let's play back out to the point. Shin corrupt to Doe. Loses it at the top of the circles. Dawson Baker, he'll float it along and he'll try to join the rush as Josh Keplinger tries to dance through Shinkaruk. He Doyle sends a man down to the ground. That's Gill. Good to see Dawson Baker out there here tonight. Carolina with the nine forwards. Trying to get out of the zones. Andreoli. Set up by Mo Valley. Leaves it for Shinkaruk. Dances to the outside. Centering pass. And it's deflected over to the far corner. Lito. Just underway, 18 and a half minutes to go here in the first period. Carolina and Columbus, here's an interception for Gus Ford. Dancing the end of the back end, he scores! <laughs> Gus Ford just 96 seconds into this one. Gives Carolina the early 1-0 advantage as he gets his 18th goal of the year. With 18-24 left to go in the first period. Carolina strikes first for the second night in a row. Sophomore <laughs> back underway. Slatka plays it up and it'll be dumped in. Cavalieri gets a touch to it. Leaves it for Justin Bioni on the backhand in the far corner. It ricochets over to Yuri Pestuka, pokes it along to Justin Bioni. That goal from Gus Ford brought to you by Riddle Tractor. Pass goes through the skates of Jan Salak. Farmer dumps it in cross corner. Chasing after it's Nolan Slehetka out there with Jordan Popoff. Two minutes gone here at the Enix on New Year's Eve. Carolina, a one to nothing lead. Cavalieri out and behind his net. Plays it along as he had Kyle Moore bearing down on him. Two goals last night for Moore. Interception by Victor Grabenikov getting his first touch in his first game back here in 2023. Dominic Dumas on the near side, backhands it in. They chase after it, Slack and Salak. On the far side, it's a quick stretch pass. Here's Moore at the red line. Circles, everyone going to the bench as he has to wait for reinforcements and drops it back to Kirk Underwood. 17-24 remains here in the first period. Carolina, a one to nothing lead here over. The Columbus River Dragons at the blue line. Jameev drops it back far side. Here's Storjahan, a shot and a save by Cavalieri. 
They battle for it at the near half board. Schnock gets the loose puck. Trying to backhand it out, he will, as he shoves Wickline into the boards. Four guys tangle for it. Storjohan comes away with the puck and dumps this one in. Fast start for Carolina, one that Steve Harrison wanted to see from his side. An unassisted goal from Gus Ford as he was able to come away with the breakaway goal for his 18th of the year. Nate Keeley dumps this one in, gets tangled up at the blue line with Nathan Balkwill. Fans want an interference, no call. Schnapp goes after Balkwell in the corner. Keplinger chasing after Jamev. Back into to Storjahan who just clears. Mavali kicks it down and it's loose in the neutral zone. Wickline picks it up, plays it over far side. Quick touch pass, saucer it over to Wickline. He dances across the blue line, floats it to Petra and Sonia. They battle for it in front. Farmer whacks it back out. Mavali backhands it off of the glass. And Keplinger throws one in on Joseph. He deflects it into the corner. Here was 16-15 left to go in the first period. Carolina wins a nothing lead thanks to the Gus Ford's goal at the minute 36 mark. Quick stretch pass. Ford got a touch to it. Farmer whiffs. And now it's loose at the top of the dots. Andrioli gloves it and heads over far corner. Centering pass goes through the slot. No one home. Petra Antonio holds. Throws one behind the cage. Rattles all the way out far side. Gill can't get to the vacant point. And it comes all the way back down as Carolina goes on for a change here. Just over four minutes in. Stretch pass. Andrioli deflects this one. and ends up going out of play. Rode up his stick and ends up going off of the end wall here on the right side of the annex. So this is protective netting, but we get a stoppage with 15.47 left to go here in the first. Face off comes across from the Thunderbirds bench. Jan Salakin for the draw. He's able to win it against McDonald. Plays it back to Clay Keeley. Sends it over to Victor Grabenikov. Rips one all the way over far side, a little too far for Pistuka. Gill will have to chase after it. No icing, and see Pirouettes behind his own cage and sends it up the far side. A quick touch pass to Kyle Moore, whacks it in around the boards. Cavalieri can't get there on the far side. Shinkaruk stepping up and pinching down, deflects it into the near corner. Hunter against Salak, now Grabenikov. It's left out near side, Shinkaruk to the point. Gill holds, throws one in, takes a deflection far side. A rebound for McDonald, gets knocked down as Clay Keeley was there. Pastuka plays it up. Theon Salak clears the zone, gets it to Dominic Dumas. Thunderbirds going off for a change. Dumas and Salak dancing through the near side. A centering pass comes on the stick of four of Benzita, and it rattles over the bar. Quickly the other way comes Columbus. Hunter dumps it in. He goes off for a change here with 14.50 left to go in the first period. Carolina a one to nothing lead. Thanks to Gus Ford's 18th of the year coming at the minute 36 mark here in the first. Carolina scored first last night. Ended up losing four to three though. A fired pass. Bitsita takes it off the board. Zips it up to Schnapp who's on side. Schnapp at the near half boards. A quick shot and it goes off the mass. Nate Keeley corrals the rebound. Plays it off the boards before Jameev runs into him. And now Slahetka trying to clear the zone. Gets it up near his side to Storjohn. Fast pace here over the first five and a half minutes at the blue line. It's dumped in by Wickline. Cavalieri, Jamea bearing down, sends it right by him. Schnapp banged into at the near half boards. Nate Keeley backhands it over to Schnapp, battling against Storjahan before Popoff steps into a shot deflection and they score. With 14.08 left to go here in the first period, Alexander Jameev gets his fourth of the weekend on a shot from the point by Jordan Popov. Jameev got a deflection to it. And we're tied up at one here just nearly six minutes in. So one to one year score here. Set to get back underway. Ford loses the draw to Petra Antonio. And on the far side, Slahetka plays it off the boards. Clay Keeley battling against Doe. Leaves it for Petra Antonio. Zips through the crease on the far side. Slahetka steps into a shot. Whistles high off of the glass. It comes all the way back out to the neutral zone. Underwood dumps it in. So Jameev and Gus Ford with goals here tonight. They both now have 18 here this year. At the top. Time for second in the FBHL. Underwood backhands it over far side. Paul Quill has it bounce off his stick. Plays it up to Doe on the far half boards. Dawson Baker trying to step in. Baker battling. It's played right by him, though. Petra Antonio lofts it, trying to out of the zone. It goes off a man, deflects into the top of the slot. Keplinger takes the loose puck. Plays it off the boards. Baker. His pocket pick. Petra Antonio comes the other way. Petra Antonio, a goal and an assist last night for him. 
It's held behind the net by Cavalieri as Columbus goes off for a full sail change. Just about seven minutes into this one. Carolina in Columbus tied up at one. Keplinger floats it forward in the slot, trying to dance through, a battle for it. Puck bouncing around, Pastuka comes away with it. His shot goes off the side of the cage. Ford got tangled up there behind the net, or on the side of the net rather, with Bulkwill. And Pastuka picks the pocket. Here comes Yuri Pastuka, dancing in on the back end. He turns, trying to find it back out to the point he can't. Now Ford takes the puck at the blue line, sends it cross corner, lets Dumas chase after it against Shinkrook. Dumas a touch to it, sending it through the slot. No one was home though, Shinkrook. Working the other way, sends it far inside. Ryan Hunter dumps it in. Cavalieri a touch to the corner. Moore gets to it, sends it in on Cavalieri, and he covers with 12.26 left to go here in the first period. A fast start for both these sides here over the first seven and a half minutes of action. We've reached our first media timeout. One to one year score between Carolina and Columbus. We're back to the annex after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fan. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee it up indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Once upon a time, not so far away, Two here. here in Winston-Salem. One-to-one your score here at 12.26 remaining here in the first period. Goals from Gus Ford and Alexander Jemayev have the scoring started here in this one. Brendan Riley with you here on near New Year's Eve. Gus Ford at the 136 mark. Giving Carolina the one to nothing lead. Jordan Popoff they gave the goal to. Rather, as well, instead of Alexander Jemayev on the deflection. So Jordan Popoff at that stance ends up getting his first goal of his FPHL career. Draw to the left of Mario Cavalieri. They tangle up, and it comes out far side to Yuri Pistuka. Trying to dump it in. It's backhanded in. It comes in on Joseph. He plays it. Shovels it over far corner. Shinkruk leaves it for his D partner, Gill. Plays it off the boards up the far side. Sneaks past Jemayev, and it's dumped in. Carolina, the delayed offside, had to get back on the side there. It's played off of the boards. Justin Bioni touches it over far side. A good knock there by Vizita. Dumas, far side, a shot. Sails high, goes in the protective netting here with 11.57 to go in the first period. So a face-off comes to the left of Taylor Joseph. The Nate Keelian for the draw against Josh Petrantonio. Tangle up on the draw, and it's one. Played out near side to Andrioli. Dumps this one in. Cavalieri waits for the bouncing puck. Forehand, sends it over. Petrantonio trying to get a quick shot away. Nice shot there by Grabenikov. Diving down. Nice to see Victor Grabenikov back in a Thunderbirds jersey. As he got signed earlier today. On the far side, Nate Keely holds it in. Batita pokes it back out to the far half boards. Schnott takes a loose puck. Gets it. Puck ricochets around. It's loose at the far blue one. Nate Keely trying to backhand it in. Instead, it's taken by Slahetka and set to Andrioli. Andrioli trying to dump it in. Good check by Jacob Schnapp as Grabenikov was trying to move it back down the ice. It's loose at the red line. They battle for it. Good check there by Schnapp again as he goes right after Pompa. The two now go into the corner, and a hit after the whistle there by Jacob Schnapp. Slahetka coming in to join him. The whistle didn't. It was whistled dead. Remember Jordan Popoffs spent four games here in Carolina. Assigned to a PTO, was later released, and made his way to Columbus as now Schnapp and Kyle Moore exchange some words. Schnapp, I'll have to go down. It looks like the call was icing. So the faceoff comes to the right of Mario Cavalieri. 11.06 left to go in the first period. Tied at one here in the last of four in a row between the two sides in this three and three. 
Nate Keeley in for the draw against McDonald. McDonald wins it. Quick shot from Moore's block. Bounces over far side. Picks up the bounding puck and wraps it around the boards. It goes past McDonald. Pick, getting to it though is Ryan Hunter. Plays it back to Underwood. Trying to send one intentionally wide. Goes off the skates of Grabenikov. And it's backhanded all the way down. Keplinger chases after. Underwood backhands it just out of the reach of the Saginaw Michigan native. Moore at the line, dumps it in. Baker finishes off his hit. Looks like the shoulder's all right there on the far side. Balquill winds and fires. It's knocked down in front by McDonald. Farmer gets to the back hit and tries to dance out of the zone. James Farmer, poke check right at the red line. Moore takes the loose puck. He's on side. Moore bank hands it to McDonald. Centering pass. A shot and a save by Cavalieri. Baker able to whack it back behind the net as they're able to stone Ryan Hunter. On the far side, Gus Ford floats it out to the center ice. Josh Keplinger trying to dance through. Balkwell applies a big hit. Crowd wanted a call, but it looked pretty clean from here. Hunter leaves it for Storjahan. A shot and a save by Cavalieri. Here with 10.03 remaining in the first period. So Cavalieri here early on seeing eight shots. On the other side, Taylor Joseph, scene six. On our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker, as always, first period is brought to you by First Bank. Face off is won by Storjahan. Back out to the point. It's dumped in. It comes out into the near corner. Salak battling Storjahan. Clay Keeley pins him against the board. Stumas, quick pass to Mo Valley. Trying to dance out of the zone. Working against Jim Amp, he is able to clear the zone, but right at the blue line, they tangle up in front of the Thunderbirds bench. Gill picks it up on the backhand. Dangerous passion. Kruk had to get rid of it quickly with Pestuka bearing down on him. And Gill takes a loose puck in his own defensive zone. Take to tape pass to Wickline. Wickline drops it for Storr Jahan. Trying to backhand one in. It comes into the crease. Buck loose in the slot. Dumas whacks it back out and clears. Clay Keeley He's trying to send it to Salak, wasn't ready for it. Set it pokes free, takes a trip along the top of the boards. He's played back to Yuri Pestuka. One to one your score with just over nine minutes left to go here in the first period. Justin Vioni on the forehand, trying to throw an in. Puck loose in front, and Salak scores! Another bouncing puck that Carolina is able to come away with. And Jan Salak beats Taylor Joseph Bible as he gets his second on the weekend. And Carolina, they regain the lead. It's 2-1 to one with 9-0-1 left to go in the first. Salak's 14th of the night, or of the season. And he's now got 98 goals in a Thunderbird sweater. Two away from the century mark for Jan Salak. 2-1, to one, Carolina the lead on the Riddle Tractor goal by Jan Salak. James Farmer controls on the ensuing faceoff. He plays it back to Bioni on the far side. At the red line, he walks in. Schnapp dumps it in. They chase after a far corner. Nate Keeley getting a skate to it. Instead, it comes out on the other side. Andrioli to Petra Antonio. Dumps it in. Cavalieri waits for it. Has to get rid of it quickly. Had two white sweaters bearing down on him. Instead, it comes the other way. Slahetka at the red line. Gets it into the zone, and they're going to say he was offside. And a call here. The stoppage with 8.21 left to go here in the first period. Carolina, a 2-1 to one lead. But it looks like it will be Columbus. Potentially going to the power play. We got a timeout. It's two to one Thunderbirds over the River Dragons. Take a timeout back with more. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job.
Carolina the lead. Over Columbus here at the under 10 media timeout thanks to Jan Salak's 14th goal of the season. Salak has been on an absolute tear. He had a goal last night after he was held scoreless for the first time in a while the night before. So Carolina now, they have the opportunity to try to extend the advantage here over Columbus with 8.21 left to go here in the first period. Faceoff is one out on the far side. It's dumped in into the defensive zone for the Thunderbirds. On the near side, it's Moore. Wrapped out far side. Dawson Baker snaps it and plays it out to the blue line because Ford poking at it. Quick touch by Moore. Gets to McDonald in the high slot on the far side. He dumps it for Hunter. Hunter rattles it around near corner. Here's Moore. For McDonald. McDonald sits. A shot goes off the back of the cage. Takes an annex hop right to Gus Ford. Ford trying to float it out. It's a battle between Keplinger and Polkwell as they tie up and they continue to be tied up over on the far side. Keplinger and Polkwell continue to have a conversation. Play goes on the other way though. Here's a shot blockered away by Cavalieri. Moore forgot the puck. Underwood takes it though. Pad save by Mario Cavalieri. Shin Karuk just off the bench. Pack ends it around near side at the half board. So it will be Kyle Moore sending it right back to Shin Karuk on the forehand. The defenseman cycling, leaves it for Underwood, walks in, a shot. Takes a ricochet and ends up going into the seventh row. No one can see it there for a second. As it was flowing, but it's going to bring up a face-off. In the defensive zone for Carolina. They lead 2-1 to one here, 7.15 to go in the first period. Face-off comes to the right of Mario Cavalieri, Jan Salak, and Alex Sorjahan. Salak wins it. It's sent back out in front, though. Dangerous pass by Alexander Jemaev. Dumas at the red line. Run into by Storjahan. Salak has it loose at its skates. Him and Wickline battle for it. Pastuka trying to dance in. And then Shin Karuk zips it the other way. Right in front of his own bench. He's run into by James Farmer and goes down. Farmer and Storjahan now are going to drop the gloves. Farmer and Storjahan exchanging blows. And Farmer suplexes him. Now Salak and Gill at the red line. They're tangled up. Four time in a row seeing each other. James Farmer already picked up a win last night. So he dropped Nathan Polkwill a night ago and now Farmer makes his way over for five minutes for fighting. So it's 6.52 remaining here in the first period. Carolina, the two to one lead. Mastor Jahan and Farmer in the box. For five minutes. We'll have to see if anything more comes from They do put two minutes up for James Farmer and what you have to think will be a boarding call. As Dawson Baker will join him and he'll serve the two minutes. So Carolina will go to the penalty kill for the first time here this evening. Last night, Columbus, they made their money, and really all weekend they made their money on the power play here against the Thunderbirds. Last night, Columbus, two power play goals, one coming in the second, one in the third, in their 4-3 victory last night. And Steve Harrison wants an explanation from the officials as to why I believe Farmer's probably in the box. And face off now with Carolina on the penalty kill. It comes to the right of Mario Cavalieri. It'll be Nate Keeley, Blake Keeley, Jacob Schnapp. And Justin Mo Valley. Shin Karuk takes it off the opening faceoff. Slahetka trying to play to Wickline as a hop over his stick. And it's brought back out to the point. Shin Karuk at the blue line. Finds Slahetka. Far half boards. He holds, searching, throws one in. Puck bouncing around. Schnapp takes it away and sends this one all the way down off of the end boards. 
Carolina gets their first hold here on this penalty kill coming in tonight, Carolina. 81% on the penalty kill, 25% on the power play. For Columbus, here's Wickline. It's poke checked away by Cavalier. Puck ricochets around again, takes another high deflection. Keeley tangles up on the far side. It's rattled around. Getting to the puck first is Ryan Hunter. Sets up Shinkaruk, a one-timer. Didn't get all of it on it. Keeley blocks it in front. He doesn't have a stick. It's sent through the crease. Jamayev plays a bank count. Petita trying to apply a hit. Hunter to Shinkaruk, a one-timer. It's deflected high and into the protective netting here at 5.55 to go here in the first period. And in a, a minute and four seconds remaining on the James Farmer penalty. Carolina trying to kill off this penalty, preserve this two to one lead. Last night, both sides were tied after each of the first and second. Faceoffs one, far side, Petrantonio a shot, sails wide. Doe at the point, shovels it to McDonald. Pastuka steps up, able to take it away and gets it from Schnapp. Here's Yuri Pastuka up the near side on the short end, centering one. It's a little too much on it there for Nate Keeley. Almost tumbles into Taylor Joseph, but now here comes Columbus. Three on two, it's Moore waiting. A shot and a save by Cavalieri. And now Schnapp and Moore exchanging some blows. Meme goes tumbling down behind the cage. As Bioni and Moore now tangled up, Schnapp tangled up again with Sequoia Swan. Schnapp and Moore had already exchanged pleasantries earlier on in this first period. And any time that you see a team four times in a row, something like this is bound to happen. And especially with the history of these two franchises, the heated rivalry between not only the teams, the fan bases, organizations. Two of the premier teams in the FPHL, two of the premier organizations as well, putting out good products on the ice year in and year out. These two sides almost always seeing each other when it means the most. So 5.31 remains here in the first period. 40 seconds remain on the power play for Columbus. Mario Cavalieri, I believe, is pleading. Cavalier returns to his crease as he awaits the faceoff to his left. And now, they're going to bring it out of the zone. So looks like Cavalier able to win that one as he's able to get the faceoff brought back out to the neutral zone across from the Thunderbirds bench. 2-1 to one, thanks to goals from Jan Salak and Gus Ford. Have Carolina in front. Back underway, Bioni. Tangled up in his own half boards. Plays it back to Bastuka, who zips it down 200 feet. 30 seconds remain on the penalty kill for Carolina. Carter Shincrook to start the next rush. It's a wick line, it's a Slahetka, and they're offside. 5-11 to go here in the first period. Coming up at the first intermission report, we'll hear from one of the owners of the Thunderbirds, Baron Saskin, here on New Year's Eve. He'll join us at the start of the first intermission report. In the second period, we will have Anthony Vitrico, former Thunderbirds goalie, join me here in the booth for the middle 20. We'll hear from Kerry Ross as well. A little later on here this evening, Carolina wins the draw and dumps it down here with 5.04 to go here in the first period and 10 seconds remaining on the penalty kill. James Farmer serving five minutes for fighting. Dawson Baker serving his boarding call as it's dumped in. Cavalieri a touch. He rattles it along the boards, comes back out to Underwood. A quick shot's blocked by Salant. Now he has Baker just out of the box. Dawson Baker up the far side. He shoots and it's saved by Joseph. Puck bounces free into the far half boards. Petrantonio clears the zone. Clay Keeley has to control a bounding puck. Sends it to Vizita. Trying to sneak it to Salak. Too far out in front. Joseph going after it. Rattles it over. Takes a hop past Dumas. With an annex hops here. A 4.24 left to go in the first period. Doe dances to the outside. Battling against Bioni. They tie up in the corner. Taking the loose puck. No. 
Andrioli plays it to the point. Gill, a quick shot, and it's gloved by Cavalieri. He saw it the whole way here at 410 left to go here in the first period. Carolina, a 2-1 to one lead. This one started to ramp up here as we've reached the late stages of period number one. We're back to the annex in a matter of moments. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hey, Thunderbirds, are you looking for a metal building? Here at Bulldog Steel Structures, we got you covered with multiple garages, barns, and styles you need. Contact us today to get your free quote at 888-551-2156. Or visit our website, www.bulldogsteelstructures.com, and mention the Thunderbirds, and we'll give you a flying deal. God bless you. Go, Go Thunderbirds! Thunderbirds. Back here in Winston-Salem. Carolina, the lead 2-1 to one over Columbus with 4.24 remaining here in the first period. Brendan Riley with you here on your New Year's Eve. Great to have you along for the ride here for the series finale between these two sides. It's been an interesting one so far. Carolina, the advantage to see James Farmer and Alex Storjohn drop the gloves. They're still both serving their five minutes for fighting as well. And see Dawson Baker go to the penalty box as well. And a face-off's going to come to the right of Mario Cavalieri off the restart after he ended up making a glove save to send us to the media time. Now, Carolina trying to snap a two-game losing skid, their longest of the season, as Baker and Moore continue to have conversations before the puck drop. I'd love to be a fly on the wall for that. And Gus Ford and Justin McDonald are in for the draw. Face-offs, one clean by McDonald to the point. Shin Crook a shot. It's blocked in front by Mo Valley. Ricochets out into the blue line. Gill dumps it in. There's McDonald. Centering pass, trying to find Hunter. It's knocked away by Ford. Baker chases after it. He avoids a hit, but it's intercepted. A little too much on it. McDonald backhands one, and a glove save by Cavalieri. Cavalieri flashing the weather there. Bounding puck that McDonald able to whack it on the back end, and Cavalieri makes a big save. Cavalieri here tonight has saved 14 or 15 shots so far here in this one. On the other side, Taylor Joseph has let two in on eight attempts in our contact LLC shots on goal tracker. Keplinger wins the draw, but instead they are going to toss out Justin McDonald, and we'll do it again. There again, it's Hunter now against Keplinger. Face off. Hunter wins it. Wins it back out to the point. A quick shot to flex in the slot. Another opportunity. A rebound attempt goes off the side of the cage. Keeley angles off McDonald. Good look there for Columbus. But the ice, but the pipes able to help him out as now we have a stoppage. It looks like there's going to be a cross check. But against who? Keplinger and Hunter jawing at each other. And Hunter is going to the penalty box. So Carolina, the power play for the first time here this evening. A little Italy power play here with 3.36 left to go. Here in the first period. Carolina 2-1 lead, trying to double that right here. Carolina this season on the power play, 23% for the Thunderbirds. This penalty kill has been terrific for Columbus all weekend long. They are at 88%. Face off, clear all the way down to Mario Cavalieri. Matt Candy rattles it out to the near side to Dawson Baker as they announce the cross-checking call. And this little Italy power play gets underway. Estuka and hands it to Gus Ford. He walks across the red line. Into the attacking zone. Ford on the backhand. Already a goal here tonight for Gus Ford. Holds at the half boards. So Baker gets it right back. Ford walking in at the near dot. Closed off by Petrantonio. Trying to send it back out to the point and ends up going errant. Looking for Dawson Baker. 35 seconds have elapsed here on the power play for the Thunderbirds. Jan Salak saucers it to Ford. Ford a backhand. Just thrown into the slot. Back all the way back out. Pastuka goes down. Hand goes up. Looks like there's going to be a slash. Cavalier to the bench. Six on four for the time being. Baker pokes it along. Underwood will get it. Now Pastuka. Only skating on one leg really going to the bench. And a slash is called. So Carolina 
will go to five on three, but Pastuka looks to be in some pain there over at the bench. It'll be Petrantonio going to the penalty box. More importantly right now, wondering about the out there of Yuri Pastuka. It's been a long weekend for the Thunderbirds, playing with only 12 skaters for a majority of the past two nights. Tonight with 14, though, with the addition of Viktor Gravenikov, as well as Dawson Baker returning after he left last night with an undisclosed injury. So five on three, Carolina here for the next 59 seconds. It's one back out to the point. Dawson Baker, he holds. Sends it to Keplinger. Far side, Salak back out to the point. Here's Baker, top of the dot. Baker to Ford, near side, a shot saved by Joseph. Puck rotates into the corner. Clearing attempts held in at the point by Baker. Baker walks in. Dances through on the back end. A centering pass. Puck bouncing around. And it comes back out to Baker. Sends it to Ford. Schnapp right in front here on this penalty kill. Ford winds and fires. He scores! The second of the night for Gus Ford. On the 5-on-3 opportunity, doubles the lead for Carolina with 2-0-4 left to go on the first. It's 3-1 Thunderbirds. His 19th of the year. He hadn't scored in the first two games here this weekend. But you know it was only a matter of time. Or Gus Ford finds the back of the net. We're back underway. 3-1, Carolina the lead on the Riddle Tractor goal from Gus Ford. And a penalty. So wait the call. Jamea looks like he might have gotten hit high. Carolina currently on the power play, still right now. Dawson Baker gets an assist. And as well as Jacob Schnapp. So Schnapp gets his fourth assist. Baker gets his 14th assist, while Gus Ford gets his 19th goal of the season. And Dawson Baker makes his way to the penalty box. James Farmer out, as well as Alex Storge on, as their five-minute majors have been served. Petrantonio is still in the box, so we'll have some open ice to play with here, as we'll have... Four on four action. Still waiting for the call here. They call a high stick as of right now on Mario Cavalieri. And they call it a double minor. So Cavalieri, who ended up been given two penalty minutes last night. Now as a double minor, and Dawson Baker will serve it for the next four minutes. So a minute 49 remains here in the first period. Gus Ford, a pair of goals, and Jan Salak. Have Carolina the three to one advantage. Four on four for the next minute 15. And then it'll be an extended power play for the River Dragons. Cavalieri is still wanting to get an explanation here. Now Farmer's making his way back over as well. So Farmer back in the box too. And now it looks like we're ready to get back underway. Face off to the right of Mario Cavalier. A minute 49 remains in the first period. Carolina the three to one lead. And Clay Keeley starts off the draw. Gets his pocket pick, though, by Justin McDonald. There's Hunter. Sends it back out to a vacant point. Good job there by Justin Bioni finishing off his hit. Taylor Joseph floats it out to the red line. Left for Hunter on the far side. Hunter trying to dance in. Spins his way in. Slat could get, get a shot away. There's Slat coming back. Hunter picks up the punt. Plays it out to McDonald. Wraps it back around. Slat uh, and Slat have not moved. Or it's rattled out to a vacant point, and Bioni applies a good hit on Hunter. A minute 10 remains in the first period. Four on four for the next 35 seconds. McDonald circles back. 
And a hand goes up as Carolina had five out there. We have another stoppage and Josh Keplinger will head to the box as Carolina is going to be called for too many men. So not the ideal situation that Steve Harrison wants here. This team now on the shorthand already for the next three minutes and 16 seconds for the next two now. It'll be four on three. And then it'll move to five on three once Petrantonio's 31 seconds are up there in the box. So dangerous time here. Saw Columbus get a, a late goal on the five on three last night. Face off to the right on it. Cavaliers one back out to the point. McDonald. The shin correct at the far half board. It's under a minute to go here in the first. McDonald winds and fires. And that one's off the shoulder of Cavalieri. He took a trip off the bar as well. Shin Crook gets the rebound. Walks the blue line. Finds McDonald. A shot. Deflected into the near corner. Shin Crook picks up the loose puck though. Dances back out. Seven seconds left to go. Petrantoni about to come back out of the box with 38 seconds left to go. A one-timer save. Rebound. It loose in front. They battle for it. And Cavalieri is able to find it and he gloves it with 34 and a half seconds to go in the first. Petrantonio out of the box though and so it'll be five on three here for the next 89 seconds that will most likely, unless a goal scored, bleed over into the second period. Last night though with 25 seconds remaining in the second period, Kyle Moore beat Cavalieri. That tied the game up at two and that really swung the whole momentum for Carolina. In favor of Columbus, that is. So face off to the right. Jacob Schnapp in for the draw against Wickline. It's whacked back out to the point. Jemayev at the top of the slot to Shin Kruk. To Flo Logo to the top of the circle. So one timer. Goes high and wide. Rebound on the near side. Nice shot by Pestuka getting a stick there, lifting it of Ryan Hunter. Jemayev to Shin Kruk again. Gets it right back. A one timer. Deflected off the end boards. 15 to go here in the first. Good check by Clay Keeley, but the hand goes up on the far side. Slahetka waiting, waiting. A shot saved by Cavalier, and he makes a save with 6.3 left to go here in the first. But Clay Keeley, right after his check into the near half boards, the hand went up. Slahetka and Schnapp talking over on the far side, but it looks like Carolina might be tabbed with another penalty. Joseph made his way to the bench, so six on three there for a little bit. But you got Dawson Baker in the box, trying to finish off the double minor against Mario Cavalieri. Too many men being served by Josh Kemmel. You're now Clay Keeley to the bench. So you got four in the box right now for Carolina, because James Farmer's still in there as well. As a reminder, we'll have Barry Soskin joining us during the first intermission report. It's been an entertaining first 20 minutes or so of action here. Three to one, Carolina leads with 6.3 seconds left to go. Here in the first period, we got four in the box right now for Carolina. They call it a boarding minor against Clay Keeler. Officials now try to get everything squared away. And Carolina now just trying to get to the dressing room. Ford, Pastuka, and Schnapp, the three for Carolina. Wickline, Slahetka, Shinkaruk, Jemayev, and Hunter, the five for Columbus. Steve Harrison now getting an explanation over at his bench. As this game has really slowed down here over the last five minutes or so. It's a quick first eight minutes. Didn't get our first media timeout until seven and a half minutes in. And now this game has slowed down tremendously. We got underway at 8.40 here tonight. So a face off to the left of Mario Cavalieri. Wick line and four, the two tens in for the draw. 
Slahetka tries to come in. Ford tangles up here. Slahetka shot rebound. Goes through the slot. Schnapp will clear this one down. And that will do it for the first period here in Winston-Salem. Carolina with a 3-1 lead over the Columbus River Dragons. Alexander Jamea unhappy as he makes his way to the bench. But Carolina with some late penalties. And they have a lot of time coming up on the penalty kill. Once period number two gets started here. But Gus Ford, a pair of goals. Jan Salak and Jordan Popoff for Columbus. The scoring in that first period. A Carolina 3-1 advantage in a good spot here. Back with 14 skaters here tonight after having 12 each of the last two nights. 3-1 Carolina in front over Columbus here on New Year's Eve and the fourth and final game this week between the two sides. We've reached the first intermission report. We will hear from one of the Thunderbirds owners, Barry Soskin, coming up on the other side of this timeout. 3-1 Carolina. After the first 20 minutes, this is Thunderbirds hockey. When it comes to performance, speed matters just like on the ice introducing same day dental crowns right here at twin oaks dentistry with cutting edge technology we craft crowns on site eliminating the need for temporary as proud sponsors of the carolina thunderbirds we understand the need for top-notch performance we're more than just dental care we're your partners in achieving your best smile i want hui to live a long happy life I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Huey. What's up everybody? My name is Zach Taylor and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over setting up at different events. This year I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds and we're going to be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you. Hope you have a great day and go birds. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and as we've reached the first intermission, and we begin our first intermission report here at the Annex. Carolina, a 3-1 lead over the Columbus River Dragons after the first 20 minutes. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB as well. And a pleasure to be joined by one of the owners here, one of the men who has made hockey possible here in the triad, Barry Soskin, joining me here from the booth for the second time here, here this year, I believe. I believe you're here on... Uh, back on opening night uh, back in November. But uh, very great to have you here. Um, uh, happy New Year to you, and, uh, and welcome back here to Winston-Salem. Well, thank you very much. Glad to be here. Uh, I want to stop and say happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> um, just found out that today. Very good. Uh, another sellout crowd. Uh, our first real sellout on New Year's Eve. It's been very good, but again, to have all the fan support is just great. Happy to see what everybody's doing in the front office. And certainly it, it it shows right here with the attendance. No, it's been it's been great. And the annex has been such a big place here for this Thunderbirds team. I mean, Steve or the head coach Steve Harrison, he says it's that uh, that extra that extra man that the Thunderbirds need. But uh but so you're back here celebrating the New Year's here in uh, in Winston Salem and uh get to see the Thunderbirds in action once again coming off of two straight losses. But a, but an interesting first twenty minutes there. <laughs> certainly we we're just talking about that and the, the last guy of the Thunderbirds that got a penalty, the other, one of the two penalties that are on the board have to come off for that two minutes to even start. So we're going to be shorthanded uh, well into to the second period here. And I like the way we've been playing, but you can't give Columbus too many power plays. It's going to come back to haunt you, especially with how many guys are out right now. It's, it's you know, I believe in next man up, but... <laughs> There's only so many men. <laughs> We're running out of them. And, and you know, it, it's 
it's a good it's it shows you uh, if they're sick or they're injured i don't like that but when players are called up it, it means that other people in the hockey industry are taking notice of not just the thunderbirds but our league and, and that just helps the players and it helps hockey in general and that's what i like to be part of no it's been great and yeah the thunderbirds short staffed here this week i mean only had 12 skaters majority of the past two nights but uh, here tonight, they're able to bring bring in uh, Victor Gravenikov back, but uh, it's resulted in a three-one lead here. But uh, you back here in Winston Salem, 2023, a good year for this organization and franchise, a Cup final appearance, and now a good start year. But for you, uh, as one of the uh, governing owners of this team, as governor of this team, what do you want to see from this organization? And what can people be excited for going forward here in the 2024? I, I think more of the same. Uh, all the changes that we've made. And I really believe this, on the ice, uh, behind the bench, off the ice, uh, yourself included. Every step we take, I think we do better than we've done before. And as far as what we're doing this year, keep it up. I mean, we're doing a great job. Don't spoil anything. In fact, don't even ask me. It, it, it turns out that what we're doing, what you guys are doing, is, is great. It's a testament of the town, the staff. And, and I can't say enough about the sponsors that, that help make this go. If, if we didn't have the sponsorship that we have, tickets would cost more money. Would we still have the same type of crowd if that happened? Those things go through my mind all the time. Uh, I, I love what we're doing with the different high tops in the corners. We're trying to get as many people in the building as we can and still be able to service them all. It's a challenge, but, but we're doing it. And, and I love... I love where we're going. Sure. So, anyways, um, we got some visitors up here real quick, but we like to we like to see what we're doing. You know, I like to watch whether I'm whether I'm here at the game, and I do not get a chance to get here as much as I would like because of the other things that are going on in the league. But when I'm here, I certainly enjoy. Uh, talking to the fans and 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 sharing a, a cocktail with a few of my friends in the nest but this is great what, what's going on here with with uh, the different uh, when we continue to and I, I keep saying we like I'm part of it as the staff continues to sell out this place that's just gonna give me a little bit more leverage to try to get something more out of the city to help us continue to grow because you know we we see what they're doing in other buildings in, in town we should get that same type of, of uh, coverage we should get that same type of uh, help from the city when we look at what we're doing I think we're we're throwing them in and and you remember you were at uh, dash last year mm -hmm. what a great truest field I mean I love the place I think we could share a little love down here <laughs> <laughs> come about 10 minutes this way we'll, we'll be happy your sound system maybe <laughs> yeah come on and, and you know what I was I've been walking around today because with that new mic it really makes a big difference. Now, if we could just get those cracks out of the speakers, yeah. I'd be a lot happier. <laughs> but, but again, slow steps, and that's one of the things we're trying to work on with the city. And, and you say sound system, it's like that. It's not like, not like what we put in our house. <laughs> like hundred thousand dollars, it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't grow on trees like my kids think. <laughs> Uh, Barry, always a pleasure to have you up here. I don't want to take too much more of your time, but thank you for coming up here. I do want to say uh, just a bit of, of Happy New Year, Happy, Healthy, and Safe New Year to everybody that's listening uh, on TOB and the Thunderbirds Network and everybody else. You know, I say it whenever I'm on. We've got people, as we keep growing and we have people, players from around the world, we've attracted fans that keep our, our channel keeps growing. And I just want to say thank you to, to my friends that are watching, and I'm sure Harry and his wife Lee are criticizing. <laughs> but, but I want to just say thank you and Happy New Year. Healthy, Happy New Year to all of our fans across the country. Barry, thank you as always. Ben, thank you. Absolutely. That's the uh, one of our owners and Governor Barry Soskin. Great to have him join us here in the first intermission report. 3-1 to one, Carolina in front over Columbus. We'll take a look at the first period after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey.
finish strong, start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one-stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of yours. Carolina Thunderbirds, as a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at maplechasecc.com. That's maplechasecc.com. Back here in Winston-Salem in the first intermission, Carolina a 3-1 to one lead over Columbus after the first 20 minutes of action. But a lot of time is going to be spent on the penalty kill for this Thunderbirds team after three penalties were charged at the end of that first period against the Thunderbirds. It was in that period, it was a... You know, a little smorgasbord of guys in the box. Carolina had four in the box at one point, or they do have four in the box even still right now. But in the in the box right now for Carolina, Josh Kaplinger serving at too many men. Clay Keeley was called for a cross check, as well as Mario Cavalieri was giving a double minor, and they gave a cross checking major to Clay Keeley. So Carolina, uh, a, a lot of time coming up here on the penalty kill. They're gonna have to try to get to work to try and be able to close some things out. Uh, but we take a look around the rest of the FPHL quickly here as we continue on our first intermission report. Dan Barry, a 4-3 shootout win over Binghamton and just earlier on today. That was a 5 p.m. puck drop there from the Visions Veterans Memorial Arena. Port here on in Motor City. A battle for the third time this weekend. Motor City picked up an 8-4 victory at Big Boy Arena. And the one other game in the FPHL here today was a 6-2 win for the Elmira River Sharks over the Watertown Wolves. We'll take a timeout, come back, and reset things for the start of the second period. More to come. Carolina 3-1 lead. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts, and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Scott Brandon with DS Brandon Plumbing. I have 30 years of plumbing experience in the triad. DSBPCO at triad.rr.com. Proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. Go Birds. Hi, I'm Wake Wagner with Wagner Appliance, proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds! My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds!
At the first intermission, Carolina holds a 3-1 to one lead over the Columbus River Dragons here in the final of this 3-3 three three here this weekend and the final of this four-game stretch. Ben Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. And our first intermission report, Carolina, the 3-1 to one lead. They got the scoring started. Gus Ford, 96 seconds into this one. This is from Josh Keplinger and Dawson Baker. Gave Carolina a one to nothing lead. First point here this year for Keplinger, who rejoined the team yesterday. Gave the goal to Jordan Papa, who gets his first FPHL goal for Columbus before with Thunderbird with assist from Cody Wickline, Alex Storjahan tied us at one at the 551 mark before Carolina at the 1059 mark. Jan Salak able to beat Taylor Joseph five hole assist from Justin Bioni and Jacob Schnapp gave Carolina the advantage once again and Gus Ford on the power play with a rocket from the slot with assist from Dawson Baker and Jacob Schnapp once again has Carolina in front three to one but Carolina a lot of time coming up on the penalty kill in the start of the second period. You got Mario Cavalieri, who has called for a double minor for high sticking. Dawson Baker serving that for him. So he's in the box right now. Josh Kevlinger is serving the too many men call. And the four on four, Carolina had five out there. And then they gave a major to Clay Keeley, which has six seconds remaining in the first period for cross checking. So a lot of time in the penalty box for Carolina. And it's going to be a lot of time on the man advantage, two man advantage as well for Columbus. A very potent attack. Coming in today at 25%. They had a pair of power play goals last night, a pair on Friday. Also had two last Saturday as well. 3-1, to one, though. Carolina in front here over the Columbus River Dragons on New Year's Eve. We'll take, our, we'll take a break and come back and drop the puck on the second period on the other side of this. Anthony Petrico also joins me for the second period here in just a little bit. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hi, I'm Stuart with Fiddlin' Fish Brewing Company here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I've been proud to be the official craft beer of Carolina Thunderbirds since 2018. Be sure to find us on draft or in cans at the games or come down and see us We're here in downtown Winston-Salem. Go Birds! Graybrook Technologies is located in downtown Winston-Salem near the Dash Stadium. We specialize in automation, integration, and motor control with our team of dedicated engineers, a UL industrial control panel shop, and our warehouse packed with VFDs and components to fabricate the custom controls your company needs. Graybrook is a preferred partner with Danfoss, Siemens, Schneider Square D, and others to bring your project to life with brands you know and trust. Visit our website at graybrook.com or call us at 336-310-9092 to learn more about the array of services we offer. Let's go Birds! Hey Thunderbirds, are you looking for a metal building? Here at Bulldog Steel Structures, we got you covered with multiple garages, barns, and styles you need. Contact us today to get your free quote at 888-551-2156. Or visit our website, www.bulldogstillstructures.com and mention the Thunderbirds and we'll give you a flying deal. God bless you. Go, Go Thunderbirds! Thunderbirds. We're back for the start of the second period. Carolina, a 3-1 to one lead over the Columbus River Dragons after the first 20 minutes of action as we get set for the start of our Flow Automotive second period. Brenda Riley with you here on New Year's Eve, being joined in the booth here by Anthony Vitrico has been happy enough to come up here and join me. Anthony, have a Merry New Year's Eve to you, and thanks for uh, coming up here for the middle 20. Brandon, thank you for having me, man. Uh, happy New Year to everybody tuning in tonight. And, man, what a better period to have than the one we just had. 3-1 game. I know we got a little bit of penalty trouble here, but I'm pretty confident in the guys that we, we can definitely get through it and, and, and keep it going. Um, what do we have left on the penalty scale here, Brendan? They got Cavalieri at the 18-11 mark. That was a double minor. At the 18-55 was the too many men. And then it was Clay Keeley being called for the major, the cross-checking major at the 1954 mark. So 
Uh, they haven't put it up on the board yet. I think they're trying to figure that out right now, the officials and the off-ice official. But it is going to be five on three here for the foreseeable future. And uh, well, you said, a good first period from the guys coming in off a of three and three, only 12 skaters past two nights, but a, a good first period there. Absolutely great first period. I mean, this whole weekend's been awesome hockey. Obviously, the last few days haven't gone the way we wanted them to go. But uh, overall, you have two great teams battling it out. <clears throat> There's no better atmosphere than here right now in the Annex. And especially on New Year's Eve, I mean, place is packed. Everybody's happy to be here, and, and we're looking forward to a great rest of the game here. we got 40 more minutes left to go here in this one. Carolina, the 3-1 to one lead. We were tied at each intermission last night, and it was Columbus who led back on Friday. But Carolina, they got goals. Two from Gus Ford, one from Jan Salak. As Ford now has 19 on the season, got, er, and then Jan Salak got his 14. He's now got 97 in a Thunderbird sweater. Trying to become the second all-time. Now they make that 98 to become the second all-time in Thunderbirds history to eclipse the 100 goal mark. The only other one that's done that is the man that's getting ready to take the, the face-off for Carolina here in the second, Gus Ford. Great to have you along for the ride here on your New Year's Eve. Good starting lineup here too with Gus Ford, Jacob Schnapp, and Yuri Pashtuka. Jacob Schnapp arguably one of the best penalty killers in the league. Guy blocks probably, what, 10, 15 <laughs> shots a game. <laughs> they, so don't, they don't keep track of the stat, though. I wish they did. That would but. be a great stat for him, especially. <laughs> he, he's definitely willing to sacrifice his body for the for the better of the team. And uh, we have Gus Ford, who's been really not known for his penalty killing skills, but this season particularly, I feel like he's really come out and shown that he can kind of do it all. He can score goals. He can kill penalties. He can move the puck. He's a, just a great all-around hockey player. So you got Keeley Baker. Keplinger and still James Farmer there and so they put 211 up for the Cavalry double minor they put 55 seconds up for the too many men call that Keplinger is serving but they nothing for Clay Keeley yet and James Farmer is still in the box as well even though Alex Sorjahan from their fighting major Sorjahan was able to rejoin the bench but we have five on three to start things off here in period number two. Carolina, the three to one advantage over the Columbus River Dragons trying to move back into a tie for first in the Continental Division. Carolina in their blackout uniforms here tonight. Going left to right, Gus Ford tangles up on the draw. Austin Doe gets the loose punch. Here comes Justin McDonald, five on three action, zips it over far side. Moore, back to McDonald. Top of the circle, sends it to Petrantonio, sends it right back. McDonald holds, sends it far side, Sorge on, back to McDonald, and the slot a shot. Sails wide past the blocker of Cavalieri. And again to the point, Petrantonio. Down, gets it back. Thinks about a slap shot, sends it to McDonald, gets it right back. Here's McDonald, top of the slot. He holds, shoots, sails high, and goes off the glass. Moore picks up the rebound, battling against Pastuca, pins him into the boards in the near corner. Shoveled along, though, Petrantonio over to McDonald, centering pass, thrown in front, and they score. Austin Doe on the deflection in front. Gets his eighth goal of the season. No, at 19, 17 left to go here in the second period. Columbus has cut the lead in half. It's now three to two. Always tough being down five on three. They move the puck well there. Uh, and good tip in front, but obviously we don't like to see it on our end. But uh, what are you going to do on a five on three? Not many options there. Luckily, we're back now, and uh, we should be at a five on four here. And we still got Baker and Keeley in the box. Keplinger is out. They have a minute 29 up. Still for Cavalieri's double minor. And the... Now you still got Clay Keeley in the box, though, for the cross-checking major. Now they're still trying to figure this out. Right now, it looks like it's only five on three still. But the goal for Doe. Makes it a one-goal game. It was going to come quickly, but Steve Harrison said it last night, talking with them, he said that the penalties at the end of the period hurt the team. And it resulting in it being a tie going into the third. There was a quick start in the third period for Columbus. They got a power play goal. Doe gets his second of the weekend. It's now they have 4-11 up for the five-minute major against Clay Keeley. So it's five on three. As now they just start the five minutes. And reset things. So five on three once again for the next 
88 seconds. Three to two, your score here at 19-10 left to go in the second period. Petrantonio, the top of the circle, sends it to McDonald and gets it right back. Petrantonio surveying. There's cross ice on the far side. Soar Jahan. So Petrantonio at the slot and a blocker saved by Cavalieri. It's back in it behind the net. Doe, who just scored a few seconds ago, sends it to Soar Jahan on the far side. In the corner, Soar Jahan. Cross ice to the point. Petrantonio. Five on three. Here's McDonald. A one timer saved by Cavalieri. Puck bouncing around. Soar Jahan controls the rebound. It's brought back out to McDonald. He walks in in the slot. Sends it near side. Moore. Clay Keeley lost an inch. Got back to it. Rather, Nate Keeley. Got back to his feet. Moore holds a shot. That's blocked by Keeley. Flex over for a corner. 39 seconds left of the five on three. A shot sails wide. Petrantonio corrals the loose puck. Petrantonio surveying. Sends it to Moore near side. A shot saved by Cavalier. And it's deflected out of play into the protective netting. It was 18-15 left to go in the second. That's a great deflect from a goalie perspective. I mean, uh, arguably one of the best goalies in the league here with Cavalieri. He, he really makes a difference for us here on the penalty kill especially. And uh, <clears throat> it's good to see him good to see him playing well. And honestly, he gets better every game he play. He saved 19 of 21 shots so far here tonight through the first nearly 22 minutes of action. He saw 40 shots last night, saw 54 last Saturday against this Columbus team. Faceoff comes to his right with Ford in for the draw against Wickline. Faceoff's one into the corner. Pestuka, that's the loose puck, and he'll clear it out to the neutral zone as Carolina able to clear their zone for the first time here over the first two minutes in the full automotive second period. Shinkarook at the blue line. Brings it in, trying to dance around Schnapp. He circles on the forehand. Baker getting ready to come out of the box. Jamaev, top of the dot, sends it far side. There it comes Baker, five on four, a shot. It goes off of Slahetka in front and goes into the protective netting. That went off of Slahetka. And never hit Schnapp, didn't that hit That should Cavalier be outside the zone well. here. Already saw Cavalieri win one conversation with the officials earlier on in that first period. So but we didn't get the bounce we needed there, but... So it is back to five on four. 3.27 remains on the major for cross-checking for Clay Keeley. Face off to the left of Cavalieri. Wickline wins it over to the near side. No one's home, though. James Farmer chases after it. Plays it off of the boards. And they're able to clear the zone. Here comes Schnapp with Ford and on main opportunity. Ford up the near side. A shot and a save by Joseph. Puck bouncing along the boards. Ryan Hunter quickly up the far side. Wickline trying to get it back to Hunter. Nice shot by Schnapp. Going to poke to it. Now it's a foot race. Gus Ford able to outlast the game. But he forgot it. Thrown in front. Couldn't find Schnapp. And Slahetka knocked it away. But a long deflection. Comes to Pestuka and dumps it in as Carolina able to kill off some time here. At 2.52 remaining on the power play for Columbus. In 17 minutes remaining here in period number two. Carolina 3-2 lead. Slahetka at the red line. Dumps one in. It took a deflection. Goes cross corner. And McDonald and Bioni chase after. Bioni to the ground. Petita lifts McDonald's stick. Comes out on the forehand near side. Here's a stretch pass to Nate Keeley. Keeley walks in on the back end. Oh. shot is saved by Joseph. Hand goes up, though. Petita. Beautiful pass from Boots. Absolutely beautiful pass from Boots there to break the puck out of the neutral zone, though. That was a great play. Great Show. play being down five on four. Showing some aggression here on the penalty kill. And Slahetka is going to go to the box for two minutes for slashing. So we'll have four on four here for the next two minutes. So there'll still be 23 seconds remaining, though, of a power play for Columbus. And now a lot of ice here, a lot of open ice with a four on four opportunity. It'll be Keplinger in for the draw against Sorjahan. Face off. Back out to the point. Bioni circles at the blue line. He just stayed on side. Tansen's into the far half boards. Of course, Storjan takes it away behind his own cage. A lot closing in on him. Gets around him and walks out on the near side. Storjan. Leaves it for McDonald. Dancing in. McDonald on the back hit. His shot goes off the That's side wide. of the cage. Bioni behind his own net. Leaves it for Pastuka. Looking for a stretch pass. And takes the short one to Bioni. 16-10 remains here in the second. Carolina, the 3-2 lead. Keplinger into the corner. 
Trying to shovel it along. Underwood takes it out of the air. They chase after it in the far corner. Him and Salak. And Underwood gets a stretch pass out to McDonald. At the blue line, he waits for reinforcements. Holds at the point. Shovels it to Storjahan, who pirouettes and brings it back out top of the circle. He's got a poke check the way to Balkwell. His shot sails high off of the glass behind the cage. And Storjahan gets the loose punt. Cycles it to McDonald, brings it back out to the point. Quick shot, takes a deflection wide, goes off the back of the cage, and Salak controls the rebound. Salak now here on the four on four. It's it to Keblinger. 52 seconds remaining of the four on four, and 15 and a half to go here in the second period. Carolina, the three to two lead over Columbus, but the River Dragons getting a goal here early on on the five on three in this second period. Petrantonio. Into the attacking zone, trying to dance through. Poke checked away by Justin Mo Valley. It's tangled up on the near side. Andrioli gets it free to Petrantonio. Goes cross ice to Carter Shincrook. Circling back to the point. Finds Andrioli. He sets his sights and fires. And a pad save by Cavalieri. Farmer loses the puck. Behind the net, Andrioli. He holds. Gets it to Shincrook on the far side. Saucers it over. To Ryan Hunter. To Gill at the near point. Slides it down into the corner. A centering pass. No one is home though. Hunter picks up the puck. Slahetka out of the box. Five on four here for the next 17 seconds. Slahetka lost an edge. Ford picks up the loose puck. Pins to the boards by Andrioli. As Baker gets hit with a high stick. No call though from either of the officials. A shot from Shinkarek sails high. Five seconds on the major for Clay Keeley. Shinkaruk, a shot, and it goes wide. Keeley out of the box, and we're back to five on five here in period number two at 14 10 remaining. That one thrown across to Crease. No, his home. No, Clay Keeley trying to step through. Runs into the Jamaif, and it's cleared back out to the red line. But Carolina allowing only one too ball, and That's that one went off right the skate of Bulkwell just coming out of the bench. Here's Ford to Batita. Centering pass, trying to get it to Baker, and it took a deflection from Shinkaruk. Baker cycles it, tries to at least, all the way around before Shinkaruk intercepts, run into by John Batita, and it's played off of the board to Alexander Jemayev. Nate Keeley finishes his hit on Jemayev, dancing on the far side. Bioni trying to angle off Hunter. So he throws him into the Zamboni doors, and Grabenikov takes the loose puck. He spins his way around, sends it far side to Batita. Batita, a stretch pass, tape to tape to Schnapp. Across the blue line, trying to get it over to Nate Keeley. Said Batita takes it, finds Schnapp on the back end. His shot goes off the side of the cage. Batita, centering pass, goes through the crease. No one was home, though, as now Balkwell goes down to the ground. Runs into Nate Keeley, and quickly the other way is Sorjahan. Puts the brakes on, working against Grabenikov. Gets a poke to it, it's loose, and he'll clear it out to the neutral zone. A nice shift here for Victor Grabenikov in his first game back with the Thunderbirds. He dumps this one in. Carolina will chase after. Have not had a stoppage yet here. In quite a little bit. 12.55 left to go in the second period. A 3-2 lead for Carolina. Doe drops it for McDonald. Near dot. A quick shot. It's blocked by Clay Keeley and left in the near corner. And backhand it out to the neutral zone. Dumas giving chase against Slahetka, who backhands it over to Jordan Popoff. And it's dumped in. They're going to say that it wasn't touched. And this is going to go for icing here at 12.36 remaining here in the second period. Carolina is going to have an attacking zone faceoff when we come back. They lead 3-2 to two here. Just over 12 and a half to go in the second period. Back to the annex after this. This is Thunderbird Hockey. When it comes to performance, speed matters. Just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care, we're your partners in achieving your best smile. Back here in Winston-Salem, 12 and a half minutes remain here in the second period. Carolina, a three to two lead over the Columbus River Dragons. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB, being joined by Anthony Patrico up here in the booth in the second period. And a interesting first seven and a half minutes or so. Anthony, what have you seen? 
I mean, so far, I mean, being on the penalty kill to start any period is tough. So I, I think the boys are going to rally together here. I mean, Coach Harry, he, he, he preaches in the locker room not to complain about penalties. I know, I know we saw that missed call there, maybe on Baker getting hit, and the too many men call is tough, but, but nobody on this team's here to complain and cry about a missed call. They're going to keep battling and working hard for the next 12 minutes. So uh, I'm expecting that we see something here, especially soon. Clay Keeley after the Thunderbirds lost the attacking zone faceoff. Sends it to Jan Salak at the red line. Quick touch pass to Yuri Pistuka. He winds and fires. Goes off the shoulder of Taylor Joseph. Puck bounces around in front. Shot goes wide. Dumas the first to it in the far corner. Dumas on the back end. Pop off closing in on him. Closes him off. Back in by Slahetka. Finds the stick of Kyle Moore. He's got Couple goals here this weekend. On the far side, Justin Movalli. Quick pass to Jan Salak. Dances to the outside. Runs into Dumas. Now Pierre now puts the brakes on. He holds. Man loses his stick. Salak sent into the boards by Moore. Good check there by Kyle Moore as Columbus goes the other way. At the blue line, a saucer pass. Slahetka walks in. A centering pass that goes off the skates of Sequoia Swan. Farmer hesitated. Sends it to Ford. Huge now three, three on, on one. Here. Ford over what to Dumas. Oh, oh timer. Dumas not able to control it. Bioni will throw one in. It goes wide in the near corner. Farmer on the back here. Trying to dance in. Works his way right past Gill. Behind the cage. Tangled up with Gill and Slahetka. Pokes free far side. Moore and Baker exchange blows. McDonald gets the loose puck though. As Baker goes down behind the play. And a penalty. Coming up for Columbus is going to be a hold. Against Slatka. Moore and Baker continuing to talk. It's actually going to be against Moore, rather. Well, now they correct the call. Slahetka is going to go. But a big power play opportunity here for the Thunderbirds. This is exactly what we really need. I mean, after that three on one, obviously, would have loved to see Dumas bury that one, but <clears throat> can't get them all. So a great opportunity. This is exactly what we needed right now. So this potent power play that has been quiet here this weekend. Both power play goals before tonight came on six on four opportunities late on Friday and late last night. Gus Ford got a power play goal here earlier on tonight at the 17.56 mark for his second of the evening. He'll be in for the draw. Schnapp, Ford, Basuka, Baker, and Salak, the five for Carolina, as Taylor Joseph takes a few extra seconds to reset himself here. As Carolina goes on a little Italy power play here with 11-11 to go in the second period. Ford and Petrantonio in for the draw. It's one back to the point. Dawson Baker, he controls. Sendra Pastuco, one-timer, oh, save, shot. rebound. Still loose in the slot, though. Bodies go crashing to the ground right in front of the crease. They battle for it. Schnapp wanted a call. Nothing, though, as it's played back out to the point. A good look there for Yuri Pastuca to start off this power play. Baker, cross ice to Ford. Ford waits. His shot gets deflected wide behind the cage. Baker, first man to it at the far half boards. Baker. The Schnapp sips one to Ford, has in the slot, back to Bastuka, now to Baker. Baker throws it into the skates of Ford. He holds for Ford, a shot! There and we go! In. That's what we needed. That's what we needed. A hat trick for Gus Ford, his second of the year. Joseph got most of it, but not all of it, as Gus Ford gets the hat trick here with only 10.35 to go in the second. Great play, great job moving the puck down low. That was honestly a perfect power play for us. And honestly, Gus Ford doesn't really surprise you anymore. The amount of goals this guy scores, the amount of points he puts up, he really takes care of business out there for us. He hadn't had a goal the first two games here this weekend. I think he made up for that year tonight with the, with the hat trick here. We're not even halfway through. So that riddle tractor goal for Gus Ford comes at the 9.25 mark here in the second period as they have to wait to get the hats off of the ice. So despite being outshot by eight, Carolina, they lead by two. Four to two, your score here. 10.35 to go in the second, thanks to Gus Ford's 20th on the season and his third here on the evening. Back underway, back to five on five. Bioni dumps this in at the red line. 
Joseph rattles it around the boards. Jamaev kicks it over to Storjahan. Schnapp a nice shot going down to a knee block in the pass. And it's poked all the way over to Justin Bioni as they announce the hat trick for Gus Ford. Falkwell plays it off the board. Storjahan run into by Vitita. And Cavalieri. Almost poke check by Wickline. Ricochets out over on the far side. Behind the cage. Nate Keeley to John Batita. Walks across the red line into the attacking zone. Batita trying to find Schnapp. Nice play there by Kirk Underwood being able to intercept. Throws it right off of the leg of Jamaev. Clay Keeley controls it. Plays it off the boards to the outside. No one was home though for Carolina. Batita to Schnapp. Schnapp circling. Trying to go cross ice. Storge on. Well cleared here up to Hunter. Nine and a half to go here in the second. Carolina the lead four to two. Ford battling against Underwood. And there's a delayed offside. Baker throws one off of Moore's midsection. And it's whacked all the way down. Will this have enough for icing? And it will. Here at 9-10 remaining in the second period. So Carolina, after this media timeout, is going to have another attacking zone faceoff. Coming up when we come back, but Gus Ford at trick has Carolina in front 4-2. Appreciate media timeout, and we're back to the NX after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day, and when we go on adventures, we get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru, and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. Carolina the lead over Columbus 4-2 thanks to Gus Ford picking up the hat trick. At the 9.25 mark here in the second period with assists from Dawson Baker and Jan Salak. So Carolina back in front, 4-2. to They will beat Taylor Joseph here four times tonight. And it's been a fun first 10-plus minutes here in this second period for Carolina, Anthony. I mean, honestly, great hockey we're watching here. And now, as I wanted to say earlier, I mean, we have the addition of the new guys this weekend. Getting uh, Firthy called up, which is awesome for him, and Kramer as well. We have Koplinger out there, and the guys really haven't skipped the beat. I know yesterday and the day before, we didn't get the results we wanted. Season series against Columbus is 3-2, but every game's been a battle. And I think it doesn't really matter who steps in our lineup. I think we can really get it done here in Carolina. We're shown so far with a 16-5-0 start. A win here tonight in regulation would have moved these two sides back into a tie for the top of the Continental Division. We're back underway off the media timeout. Nathan Balkwill gets the faceoff, plays it up the far side. Ryan Hunter in front of the Thunderbirds bench. Chips this one in. Clay Keeley into the corner with two white sweaters closing in on him. Takes a hit from Moore, and it's played up to Dawson Baker. Here's Gus Ford. Already with a hat trick tonight, dumps it in. Carolina will chase after it. Joseph gets rid of it quickly. On the far side, Kaplinger puts pressure on Moore, who floats it all the way back out to the neutral zone. Justin Movalli trying to saucer one. Ford was going the other way, though, and this goes down for Ison with eight and a half to go. So we're going to have some tired legs out there, but I think we'll be all right, be able to get the puck out, get a quick line change here when we can. Ford and a lot of these guys have played pretty north of 60, 70 minutes here this weekend with only 12 skaters for a majority of the past two nights. Carolina right now showing some heart in the conditioning here. Shot from Slahetka, saved by Cavalier. Great save by Cavi. The face off will come to the left in the defensive zone. Carolina's going to bring out Slahetka, Pastuka, Dumas, Farmer, and Bioni. It'll be Slack and Petrantonio, the former teammates, in for the draw. The left of Mario Cavalieri here with 8.33 to go in the second. Carolina, the 4-2 lead. Petrantonio wins the draw. Now to the point, Popoff steps up into the corner. It's a stink lifted by Dumas. Those two have been battling Great all playoff, weekend. It was a quick touch pass to Jan Salak at the blue line. Salak battling against Slahetka, shovels it into the corner. 
Dumas gets the loose puck, brings it out far side, surveys, finds Bioni, a shot, and a glove save by Joseph. Great shot by Bioni there. Great shot. Good save there by Joseph. So this check line obviously being a little bit mixed up this weekend with having Dumas in the lineup now. I still feel they can still get the job done here. I know with, with, with Penny being out, he's a huge piece of the puzzle for these guys, but uh, I think Dumas is really filling in as we saw when he broke the puck out there in the defensive zone. He fits right, right in with this line. Face-offs won by Storjahan. Pasuka gets to it first, though. Dumas in the far corner. Gill pressuring him. Backhands it, trying to leave it for Salon. Working against Storjahan. Gets it to Dumas. Throws it off a skate in front. Deflects near side. Pinching down is James Farmer. Gets it to Dumas in the corner. Goes down to two knees. Thrown into the boards. Or Shinkarut gets the loose puck. The hand went up. And it looks like Ryan Gill is going to the penalty box. And Carolina will get another Little Italy power play. Well, big opportunity here. You score here. You can really try to start to pull away here if they're able to find one here. Carolina already with two power play goals tonight. Both of them from Gus Ford. He was in for the draw. And he's already got a hat trick. Carolina, 4-2 lead, face off. And they say there is a false start. They're calling the men out on Columbus. Yeah. McDonald tossed out. Sequoia Swan in for the draw. Swan wins it, tries to clear it. And he does as Carolina get back on side. This one's rattled all the way over Cavalieri's head. Dawson Baker cycles it back to Yuri Pestuka. You're a seven and a half to go in the second. A minute 45 remaining on the two-minute roughing call by Ryan Gill. McDonald gets the puck, though, in the corner. Tangles up Baker trying to backhand one along. They'll shovel it over to Gus Ford. Stretch pass to Salon. He's got Schnapp with him, two on two. Here come the Thunderbirds now, four on two. It's dropped for four. Centering pass. Oh, and getting back and getting a touch with Swan as Baker was there in the slot. They go the other way. Swan loses an edge. Tripped over his own skate. And a turnover in the neutral zone. Slock to Schnapp. He's it for Ford. Ford surveys his shot, battling around. Balkwill tries to clear. Pasuka can't get there in time. And a quick stretch Plays pass. Right Pasuka left it, though. Schnapp just getting back on sign. Plays it back as Columbus is in the middle of the change. Hence the quick pass from the netminder, Mario Cavalieri. 51 seconds remain on the power play for Carolina. Dumas. Brings it on the backhand. Austin Doe pressuring him. He leaves it for Gus Ford. Carolina spending a lot of time in their own zone here on this power play. Now a quick stretch. A good saucer pass to Dumas. Near side. Dumas a shot. Oh, and a shoulder save by Joseph. And it goes in the protective netting. Great shot by Dumas. Great opportunity there on the rush. Hopefully we can get a big face-off win here. Maybe get something going. Dumas has one goal this season. It came back on November 4th. Similar situation, walked up the near side. Was able to snap one past Christian Pablos. Face off to the left. Nate Keeley wins it, trying to get it to his twin brother Clay. Keplinger takes it, walks in, a shot. It's blocked by Slahetka. Goes high in the air. Keplinger gloves it down and cycles it behind. Batita has a hop over his stick, battling against Popov now. Keplinger backhands it all the way back out to Dumas. Has it go under his stick. And Clay Keeley has to go back to chase here with 10 seconds remaining on the power and play for Carolina. Gill getting ready to come out of the box. Clay Keeley waits. He has his pass intercepted. Now a chance for Wickline. Batita trying to get back. Here's Wickline walking in. Batita angles Great back check into by the corner. Booster. Great back check. Hand goes up, though, in the near corner from the official. And they're going to call a hold on John Batita. So as much as we hate to see that penalty there, that's a penalty that's worth taking. Stop a guy on a clear breakaway. I mean, Boots, hard back check. Could have gone either way, but great work by Boots there getting back. So you trade the penalty for the goal, and now the penalty killers will get an opportunity here. 5.39 to go here in the second. Carolina, the two-goal advantage. Steve Harrison animated there over, talking to his team.
A face off to the right of Mario Cavalieri. Sorge on and Nate Keeley in for the draw. Keeley backs it back out. Here's McDonald, top of the slot. A shot and a close. Great save by, by Cavalieri. Cavalieri. Great save. Saw it the whole way, caught it on the backhand. Now another draw. Asos one, McDonald at the point. Sends it to the Petronio, centering pass, deflected high over on the far side. Doe picks it up. He's got a goal in this period. Had a goal last night. It's back out to the point. McDonald to Sorjahan. Back out. McDonald surveys at the top of the zone. Sends it over to Petronio. Top of the circles. Sends it down to the goal line to Kyle Moore. Threw one across the zone. No one was home, though, as this one comes all the way back out to the neutral zone. Carolina holds on the first rush. Doe almost gets his pocket picked by Schnapp in the neutral zone. Farmer holds off Doe, and Nate Keeley clears it all the way down. Second unit penalty killers out for the Thunderbirds. Sorjahan with under five minutes to go here in the second. Carolina a 4-2 lead over Columbus. Slanka at the red line. Dances in. Cycles it over far side. Carter Shinkaruk has it right by his bench. Goes across the blind. McDonald, a shot knocked down in front. Salak trying to get to the loose puck. Clearing attempts knocked away by Jemayev. Held behind the net. Now Movali will clear it all the way down. It's a great clear by Movali there. We needed that. Get a quick little line change going. The D stay the same. Slahetka into the attack. We got Schnapp, zone. Nate, Clay, and Movali out there right now. I mean, like I said before, Schnapp, one of the best penalty killers. Nate and Clay, both nail guns. Movali being a new addition this weekend. Uh, he, he's really been getting the job done too, though. Nate Keeley, a good clearance. Shin Crook, one last chance here with 18 seconds to go on John Petito's holding call. Shin Crook into the slot. Poke checked away by Vioni, and it's cleared. 3.45 remains in the second. John Petito out of the box here in four seconds. Jamaev ahead of steam, poke checked. It's left for Shin Crook though, back to five on five as Carolina kills off another penalty. Moore on the far side to McDonald, just off of the bench, and they're offside. Here with 3.31 to go in the second period. Carolina, the four to two lead, so we start to get late here in period number two. We're back to the Enix after this, this is Thunderbirds Hockey. What's up everybody? My name is Zach Taylor and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over, setting up at different events. This year, I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds, and we're gonna be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you, hope you have a great day, and go Birds. Back here in Winston-Salem, Carolina enjoying a 4-2 lead right now with just over three and a half minutes to go in period number two. Brendan Riley and Anthony Batrico with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOV. A couple of power play goals for both sides here in this second period. Carolina the advantage though, as they were just able to kill off another big penalty as well. We're coming back here even strength whatever that offsides call. I have, I have good hope here. I have good hope. I think, I think we can get something going here before the end of the period. And we're, we're coming back out with uh, Fordo, Copes, Baker, Bioni, and Farmer. And, I mean, as we've seen tonight, Ford's been doing his job. So, so I have confidence here right before the end of the period. Second hat trick of the season for Gus Ford. The third for the Thunderbirds. Dawson Baker has the other. That came in that Sunday come from behind victory against Port Huron back in early December. And now a face-off in front of the River Dragons bench. Ford and McDonald tie up. Ford ends up winning it, and Baker dumps it in. Good to see Baker out there after he was a game-time decision here tonight after he left in the first period last night. It's whacked off of the linesman. Farmer benefits from that and wraps it around the boards. Takes a trip on top. Ricochet's over into the far corner. Nice move there by Kirk Underwood as he dances around Keplinger. Here comes McDonald. Down Main Street, a shot sails wide. Comes out on the far side. Peony getting tangled up there. Two guys go down. They blow the play dead. Peony and Underwood, they got tangled up. No ill will there, just two guys getting wrapped up. 
That does bring a defensive zone faceoff for the Thunderbirds here with 2.57 to go in the second. It's Columbus team that has had 40 shots last night. They had 50, they had 50 back on Friday and at 54 last week and right now at 28 shots Carolina with 20 on our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker defensively I think we've really stepped it up here especially tonight I mean obviously you don't want to you don't want to get swept by any team but here we really don't want to get swept by a team like Columbus where we know we can take them down and we have three other times so tonight's no different interesting Development though, Jacob Schnapp just went to the dressing room early as Mario Cavalieri flashes the leather on Kyle Moore off the draw. It was the end of the second period that really swung the momentum in Columbus's favor last night. They tied it up with just 25 seconds remaining in that second period on the power play, and then they came out quickly in the third, but Carolina able to clear the zone as Falkwell wraps it around. Cavalieri in front of the Zamboni doors. Plays an annex hop off of one of the stanchions. Moore back down to Underwood. Throws it off a couple of skates. Grabenikov in the corner. He's had some good shifts here tonight for Victor Grabenikov here in his return. Dumas trying to get a bounding puck. Moore lifts his stick and it's dumped in. Two and a half to go here in the second. Salak backhands it to Clay Keeley. It's too much on it though. Here's Petrantonio on the near side. Dancing into the corner, battling against Grabenikov. It is now Moore pinned to the boards against Clay Keeley. Petrantonio gets the loose puck. Grabenikov trying to hold him off as he's able to. And he's able to kick it along to Clay Keeley. Just off the bench, Wick line on the far side. Underwood sends this one intentionally wide. McDonald throws it in front. A save by Cavalry. Another attempt goes wide for Wick line. Absolutely great save. Wick line to McDonald brings it out on the far side in the corner. Good zone time here for Columbus. Shot goes wide after Dumas got a touch to it. Drop back out to the point. Underwood finds Jemayev in the slot. Sends it right back to him right in front of his own bench. We'll dump this one in. 90 seconds remain here in the second period. Carolina not able to clear their own zone here. Grabenikov in the corner. He's been out there for the better part of a minute plus. Near side, ball call. His shot goes off the side of the cage. Gets his own rebound. Now throws it in front. A shot and they score. Alexander Jemayev able to beat Cavalieri short side and tuck one home. You now with a minute 18 remaining here in the second, Jemayev, he gets his fourth on the weekend and makes it a one goal game. <coughs> Had a feeling something was coming with how long they held it in the attacking zone. They did have his pin for a little while there, and, uh, and unfortunately, bad bounces do happen. And then and right there, a tough shot off the post for Cavity to make the save on. But uh, like I said earlier, I'm so confident we still have some something left in the tank here with the last minute going here in this period. Jamev thumps it back in. Behind the net, Farmer throws a man down. Disposes of Wickline, but it's brought back out to the far point. Shinkruck a shot, goes to Wickline in the corner. Ends up tumbling to the ice. A quick stretch pass to Nate Keeley. Brings it into the zone. 50 seconds remain. A quick shot. Rebound loose in front. Jamev cleans it up, though. Backhands it out to Moore. As it hop over his stick, and Bioni quickly gets it up to John Batita. At the, red, at the blue line, Gus Ford. Marks in a shot. Takes a deflection wide. Shinkaruk getting a stick there. Ford. Battling against Sorjahan. Puck bouncing around, floating in the air. It's played with a hand out to Farmer, who's able to keep it in here with 30 seconds remaining here in the second period. Carolina, a 4-3 lead here over Columbus in the final of this three-game series here this weekend. It's kept in Ford. Great hold by Ford. But Zita Great hold by Ford. To send one across. Puck loose. Oh, great shot by Boots. But Zita's uh. shot is saved by Joseph. A big save there from Taylor Joseph. Threat not over, though. Sorjahan. Down against Petita into the corner with seven seconds left to go. Petita taps it along to Nate Keeley with four seconds to three. Throws one in the crease. Joseph gets a stick to it. It's banged behind the net. And that will do it here for period number two. An interesting middle 20 minutes of action here. Goals for both sides. But Carolina, they lead four to three after the first 40 minutes of action here on New Year's Eve at the Annex. 
Well, Anthony, this was fun. Great to have you up here for the second pair. If you want to stick around for the third, you're more than welcome to. But if you if you want to get back to the uh, get back to the crowd, uh, no 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 hard feelings there. But, Brandon, uh, thank you so much for having me. I mean, honestly, to everybody's tuning in, we appreciate all of you guys. You guys all have a great Happy New Year, and and be sure to stay tuned for the last 20 here. This is honestly one of the greatest games we've seen in the last couple days. This is probably the best hockey you're going to be watching tonight. On a happy new year for everybody. And thank you again, Brendan. Anthony, thank you so much. That's Anthony Patrico, and we've reached the second intermission. We'll hear from Kerry Ross on the other side of this timeout as we get the second intermission report underway. Carolina, 43 lead over Columbus at the second intermission. We're back to Winston Salem in a couple minutes. This is Hunter Birds Hockey. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Get ready, Winston Sales. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of yours. Carolina Thunderbirds, as a top producer and your go to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersap.allenton.com. Carolina and Columbus and another good one as it has been all season. But Carolina, the 4-3 to three lead over Columbus after the first 40 minutes of action. We are joined by Barry Soskin during the first intermission. Now, great to be joined by Kerry Ross here in the second intermission. Kerry, a happy New Year's to you. Welcome back up here to the broadcast booth and uh, great to have you along. It's been a fun first 40 minutes. Yeah, thanks for having me up here. I just want to uh, wish all of our great fans a happy new year, and thanks for all the great support. This is our third sellout in a row, so things are rolling along really good. And it's been a, it's been fun. The annex has been fun here this year, and uh, when I was talking with Barry during the first intermission, he uh, he was talking about how he was trying to you know see if the city could help <laughs> could help out a little <laughs> bit, but uh, but but so far here this year, it's been a great turnout. The fan support strong as ever here for this Thunderbirds team, and you, Barry, and Rick as the three owners, you guys have to be pretty happy and proud of what you've seen here. Couldn't be happier, and our our fan support has been beyond any expectation. Our sponsors have been fantastic. The boosters have all been great. And everything I couldn't ask for any more. You know, working with the city, we'll we'll make some headway next year. And I have some meetings set up with some people, and uh, we'll see. You know, then people are uh, starting to see that uh, we're filling the building and we're attracting a lot of people. Uh, we're going to be starting a program in uh, January where we're bringing in some underprivileged kids and we're gonna Thunderbirds will buy them equipment and we'll get players out to teach them how to skate and we'll pay for the ice and we'll get some kids that uh, are unfortunate that can't afford uh, hockey and we'll bring them into the program so should help 
Yeah, absolutely. That'll be great coming up here after the turn of the new year. But uh, looking at this team and, 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 you know, for you being one of the owners, but you're also a fan as well. It's been a good start here this season, dropping the last to the last night. But uh, tonight it was a uh, action-packed first 40 minutes, and uh, but your side's got the lead right now. Oh, it's been great hockey. I mean, it's I love the games. They're, they're entertaining, you know. It, uh, I was with Barry a couple weeks ago and we were at an NHL game and guys were going in the corner and nobody was hitting each other and they, they come out of the corner, they're using their sticks to get the puck and Barry and I just looked at each other and said, man, if that was in the Fed, those guys would have gone in and one of the guys would have been plastered <laughs> against the boards. So it's just a different hockey. I, I love the hockey. It's more old school hockey, more hitting. You know, obviously the fans love the fights. That's great. No, it's been great, and it's been a very entertaining product. I mean, it's on for me first year here, uh, here with the organization. It's been entertaining all season long, and uh, now, now for you as uh, you know, reach the new year, turn into 2024. Ask Barry the same question. But what, what do you see next for this Thunderbirds organization? Not just talking about what's on the ice, but for really everyone involved and all the fans as well. What do you see next coming up here for the Thunderbirds? Well, obviously we want to keep the winning hockey going, and. Uh, you know, it's uh, we're fortunate that we have some good players that are getting called up. And, you know, I know the fans uh, don't like when our guys get called up, but that's why these guys are playing. You know, they they playing hard and they get the opportunity to go up. And that's our job to promote guys and let them go up. So, you know, I see in the future the guys going up and Coach Harry bringing in guys that take their place and. You know, I, <clears throat> we'll be there at the end, and uh, I'm, I'm thinking that we'll be in the finals, and we'll have a, uh, a good run at it, for sure. So, so an early prediction here early on, Dece prediction. on December 31st, 2023, you're seeing this team <laughs> on, in the On finals. your birthday, yeah. of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's been, uh, it's been fun here. It's been a first, fun first 23, 24 games here so yeah. far this year, and still a lot more it's to been, come been great still a lot more to come don't forget coming up next weekend two games against port here on 735 on friday and then 605 coming up on saturday but barry uh, any other plans here on the new year's or uh, waiting for the puck drop obviously after this one but any big plans Wait for, for the you? puck drop and fortunate my grandkids are here tonight so you will spend uh, new year's with my grandkids they're from chicago and don't get to see them a lot since we moved down here so it's been good been good well i won't i won't keep it from them any much much longer thank you very much that's carrie ross here great to have him join us here in the second intermission report right now carolina four to three lead over columbus here with about 13 and a half to go until the start of the third we're back to the annex after this this is thunderbirds hockey mabel chase golf and country club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad Come enjoy a meal at the Pine Brook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee it up indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Once upon a time, not so far away, Two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker. One with big heart, they were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Scott Brandon with DS Brandon Plumbing. I have 30 years of plumbing experience in the Triad. 
dsbpco at triad.rr.com. Proud support of the Thunderbirds. Go Birds. Hi, I'm Wake. Back here in Winston-Salem, Carolina with a 4-3 lead over the Columbus River Dragons here at the second intermission. Brent O'Reilly with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB as well. It's been an hectic first 40 minutes of action to say the least. You have goals flying all around. Gus Ford already with a hat trick here tonight. But the Thunderbirds only lead by one. In that first period, Gus Ford at the minute 36 mark gave Carolina the one to nothing advantage with an assist from Josh Keplinger and Dawson Baker. Jordan Popoff got his first goal of his FPHL career at the 5.51 mark to give us a one-to-one -one game. Carolina would then regain the lead as they would rattle off two more goals in that first period from Jan Salat and Gus Ford, who got his second. And then Carolina, at the end of the first period, ended up being on the penalty kill for a good portion of the first fourth of the second period, but only resulted in one goal for Columbus, and that came from Austin Doe, his second this weekend, with assists from Justin McDonald and Josh Petrantonio. So those two, they made it a 3-2 game at the time, but then with Carolina back on the power play, at the 9.25 mark, the hats came raining down here at the annex as Gus Ford got his second hat trick of the season. Third for the Thunderbirds here in 2023-2024 with assists from Dawson Baker and Jan Salak to make it a 4-2 game before it was Alexander Jamea being able to sneak one past Mario Cavalieri near side with assists from Nathan Balkwell and Cody Wickline to give us our 4-3 score, which is where we sit right now seen James Farmer and Alex Storjahan drop the gloves. We've seen penalties galore as well. It has been a lot here so far. Power play goals for both sides. Carolina, after the power play, have been kind of dormant the past two nights and really the past three games here against this Columbus team. They're able to find the back of the net twice here on the power play, both coming from Gus Ford. But Carolina, the power play is starting to get back in rhythm. Remember, Carolina only had 12 skaters the past two nights. Today, they brought in Victor Grabenikov. Uh, to rejoin the team as a defenseman after not being on the team the first 21 games of the season so far here this year. They brought back Josh Keplinger yesterday as well. So Carolina with some reinforcements, much needed, and it's paid off so far as Carolina has a 4-3 to three lead here at the second intermission in this one. A win tonight for Carolina, only in regulation, though, would end up giving Carolina back in a tie for first with this Columbus River Dragons team. Carolina leads the season series 3-2 to two, as well as you heard Anthony Patrico say. Great to have Barry Soskin on during the first, first intermission. We just heard from Kerry Ross as well. Also got a text here a little bit before the game from our third owner Rick Chaikin saying wishing all the Thunderbirds fans and sponsors a happy and healthy New Year. Good one here at the Annex. 4-3 to three, Carolina the lead after the first 40 minutes of action. We'll take a timeout and come back and Recap the scores from early on today around the rest of the FPHL, and then it'll be time for puck drop of the final 20 minutes here from the Annex. We're back to the Annex in a matter of moments. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hi, I'm Wake Wagner with Wagner Appliance, proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds! My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! Thunderbirds. Hi, I'm Stuart with Fiddlin' Fish Brewing Company here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I've been proud to be the official craft beer of Carolina Thunderbirds since 2018. Be sure to find us on draft or in cans at the games or come down and see us We're here in downtown Winston-Salem. Go Birds! Graybrook Technologies is located in downtown Winston-Salem near the Dash Stadium. We specialize in automation, integration, and motor control with our team of dedicated engineers, a UL industrial control panel shop, and our warehouse packed with VFDs and components to fabricate the custom controls your company needs. Graybrook is a preferred partner with Danfoss, Siemens, 
Schneider Square D, and others to bring your project to life with brands you know and trust. Visit our website at graybrook.com or call us at 336-310-9092 to learn more about the array of services we offer. Let's go birds! Hey Thunderbirds, are you looking for a metal building? Here at Bulldog Steel Structures, we got you covered with multiple garages, barns, and styles you need. Contact us today to get your free quote at 888-551-2156. Or visit our website, www.bulldogsteelstructures.com and mention the Thunderbirds and we'll give you a flying deal. God bless you. Go, Go Thunderbirds! Year's Eve, we start in Watertown, New York. That was actually last night. Uh, we start in Binghamton, New York, at the Visions Veterans Memorial Arena. Danbury and Binghamton, they had to go to a shootout today to try to decide that one. And ended up Danbury on the road being able to take down Binghamton 4-3. to three. They won one to nothing in the shootout. Scores. Danbury found themselves down 3-1 to one going into the third period. And it was two third period goals for Danbury that tied it up. And then it was a win in the shootout. Connor Woolley was able to win it in the shootout in the second round for Danbury. So Danbury takes the two points against Binghamton as we look elsewhere in the FPHL. Motor City and Port Huron at Big Boy Arena. They finish up a three-game set and Motor City was happy to be home as they double up Port Huron. Eight to four there in that one. Declan Conway had four goals. He had four goals. TJ Sneath had three points. Jamison Milam also had two points as well as Motor City doubles up Port here on there. And that one and the one other game here this evening. It was earlier today, actually, this afternoon at 2.05 from First Serena in Elmira, New York. A 6-2 win for the Elmira River Sharks over the Watertown Wolves. You saw Tyler and David Gaeta come away with two goals in that one as Elmira takes a 6-2 win. And that's all the action in the FBHL here today as the nightcap primetime matchup. Is getting ready for the start of the third period. Saw Jacob Schnapp head to the dressing room a little bit before the end of the second period. Let's see if he'll be back out there on the ice here for period number three. Carolina and Columbus for the fourth and final time here this week. Finishing out a three and three as well. Carolina trying to snap this two game losing skid here against this Columbus River Dragons team. The third period is coming up on the other side of this timeout. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. What's up everybody? My name is Zach Taylor and I'm the owner of Little Donuts. We're a mini donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts, traveling all over setting up at different events. This year I'm happy to announce that we are a proud partner of the Carolina Thunderbirds and we're going to be set up inside the Annex building all season long at every home game. So while you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, swing by and warm up with some hot fresh apple cider mini donuts made on site right when you order. Thank you. Hope you have a great day and go birds. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. With you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB, a 4-3 lead for Carolina 
over Columbus after the first 40 minutes of action here in Winston-Salem on, on your New Year's Eve. It should be another exciting final 20 minutes. These two sides in all five meetings here this year have played close contests. They've been tight last Saturday here at the Annex. Carolina and Columbus were tied at three. Saw Carolina come away with three third period goals. Could use more of that here tonight as they try to take the three points here in their blackout uniforms here on New Year's Eve. Another sellout crowd, as you heard from Kerry Ross, third consecutive sellout here at the end. So if you haven't gotten here yet this season, you gotta get down here for a game to experience Winston-Salem and Triad Hockey. As Carolina and Columbus, these two running away in the Continental Division. This is a big swing here tonight. Carolina, if they win in regulation, move back into a tie for first. A win for Columbus moves them six points clear of Carolina. And they also have two games in hand. So it comes down to 20 minutes here at the Enix. As we approach 11 o'clock, about an hour 15 away from the new year. Great to have you along here on your New Year's Eve. Thankful to have you join me here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Brendan Riley with you, my production crew here at the Annex, still in Klein, Caleb Blazier and Haley Foster, as well as Rick O'Neill, the radio guy, working back in our WTOB studios. Gus Ford and Alex Storjahan in for the draw. We're underway here in the Mustard and Crutchfield. Third period on the new sheet ice. Dawson Baker loses it. Alexander Jameev, who just made it a one-goal game with... Not too long ago, in that second period, thumps it in. Baker gets the bank, run into there at the boards. Puck bouncing around there in the top of the zone. Jamea trying to keep it in. He will, sends one cross corner, and they chase after it. Fioni, a touch to it, clears the zone. Keplinger shovels it along, chases after Underwood now. Over on the far side, Nathan Bulkwill dumps it in. Fioni takes it in front of his own cage. And Ainge really pressuring him. It's his stick lifted. It's whacked around behind the net by Doe. Farmer run into Salak. Picks it up trying to get it out of the zone. Farmer shovels it along. Shinkaruk steps up though. Throws one into the middle of the slot. Yuri Pastuka takes it away. At the red line here come the Thunderbirds. Three on two if they hurry. Pastuka holds his shot. Gets blocked by Gill. Gill at the red line. Dumps this one in. Cavalieri a touch to it in front of the doors. A minute 10 gone here in the third period. Shin Crook in the neutral zone. Back hands it over to Gill, far side. Quick touch pass to Andrioli, who shovels it right onto the stick of Justin Movalli. A backhand dump in. Movalli gets sent down behind the play. The hand goes up behind the play, and Carolina is going to be going to the power play for an interference call. They're going to get Andrioli for interference. Here with 18-32 remaining in the third. Carolina, the 4-3 lead. They've already scored twice tonight on the Little Italy power play. Now a big opportunity. Gus Ford has already got a hat trick. He scored twice, both power play goals. And he's in for the draw. They tangle up, and it's cleared by Sequoia Swan all the way down. Mario Cavalieri had to go down to the butterfly. He backtracks and leaves it behind the cage for Yuri Pistuka. Sequoia Swan coming in. Josh Ketlinger over far side. Pistuka trying to get a stretch pass. A little too much on it. Baker knocks it down at the red line. McDonald comes back though. Sends it far side. And Balquill will hammer it down the ice. Two minutes gone here in the third period. Carolina, the 4-3 lead, trying to extend it here on the Little Italy power play after Andrioli. Carson Andrioli was called for interference. A shot whistles wide from Keplinger, stepping up on the far side. Pastuka pokes it along. Ford trying to cycle it now. Comes right back down to the point. Pastuka keeps it in. Here's Ford, top of the slot. Ford, a shot as he goes tumbling to the ground. Gets deflected back out to Pastuka. To the near side, Baker, far side. Salak back out to the point. Here's Baker, a one-timer. He whipped it, thrown in front. Ford, a rebound opportunity. What a save by Joseph. It's still loose in the slot, though. Baker can't get a shot away. And Ford controls the puck. Sends it back out to the point. Pastuka, a shot. And a glove save by Taylor Joseph, who just made a heck of a save as Gus Ford was right there trying to get his fourth of the evening. Fifth 
50 seconds remain. On the power play for Carolina, Taylor Joseph. Going down into the splits. Keeps it a one goal game. Petra Antonio and Nate Keeley are in for the draw. As Petita and Wickline to step back, the faceoff is whacked all the way back. Yeah. To Mario Cavalieri. He plays it for James Farmer. It's Farmer, Nate Keeley, Clay Keeley, Dominic Dumas, and John Petita, the five. Still no Jacob Schnapp on the bench. Clay Keeley, though, cycles behind the net. Thrown into the boards by Slahetka. Petita trying to poke the puck free at the skates. Slahetka, a nice job being able to stall there in the corner. 20 seconds remain on the power play. Petra Antonio takes it on the backhand and floats it into no man's land. Dumas with one last chance here. Andreoli getting ready to come out of the box. Stretch pass to Batita. Across the blue line, Batita trying to dance in. He lost the puck. It's cleared with four, three, two, and one. Andreoli out of the box, and we're back to five-on-five five action. An interception in the neutral zone. And Shin Kuruk, he retreats. Holds on the far side to Moore. His own half. His pass goes errant. And Kaplinger takes the loose puck. Josh Kaplinger, a shot. Sails high on the far side. Petita gets the rebound. Backhands it down into the corner. Gill and Kaplinger battling. Kaplinger throws it in front, trying to get it to Ford. Here's a slap shot from a valley. It's blocked by Hunter. Now here comes Columbus quickly the other way. Hunter up the far side, a shot and a save by Cavalier. Rebound pokes free into the corner. Petita, quick stretch pass and a little too much on it for Keplinger, who chases after it with Shinkura. He tries to play it off the boards, goes off the linesman as Keplinger dumps it back in. First line out there for Carolina with Dawson Baker. Shot thrown in front. Shinkura can like it all the way through. Baker able to throw a hit there on the far side on Kyle Moore as those two continue to go at each other here over the past week. Hunter into the attacking zone. They're on side. He settles, sends it far side. Quick touch pass. Sorge on a shot and a pass saved by Cavalier. A backhand attempt goes wide. Wick line holds in the far corner. A one timer saved by Cavalier. Sorge on a good look there and said Gus Ford has a trickle under his stick. And on the near side quarter, Shin Kruk controls. 15 10 to go here in the third period and a massive matchup here in December. This one comes all the way in on Cavalier and he freezes with 15.05 to go in the third. Not a lot of stoppages here early on. So Jacob Schnapp, he went to the dressing room right before the end of the second. Not out on the bench, so Carolina once again down to 12, trying to find something here over the last 15 minutes and five seconds. Come away with the three points this evening. Ford drops Storjahan on the draw, but it's one to Jemayev, who gets poked away, picks it up in the slot, throws one off the skates of Farmer, and Pasuka clears the zone with under 15 to go here in the third period. Underwood to Wickline. Finds Jamaev, a shot sails wide on the far side. Paul Quill trying to pinch, gets a stick lifted. Dumas almost had it and said it's saucered right to Salak. Gloves it down, Jan Salak backhands it over far side. Pastuka winds and fires. Sorjahan blocked it. Underwood trying to rattle it out. It'll hop by everyone and as both sides are getting off for changes, Mo Valley forgot the puck for a second and backhands it to Bioni, who dumps it in. With 14.22 to go here in the third. Sold out crowd here at the Annex. Third straight sellout in Winston-Salem here on New Year's Eve as we approach 11 p.m. on the East Coast. Slahetka. Loser it for Andreoli. A shot save. Rebound. Poking around. Cavalier is able to find it and he covers with 14.07 remaining in the third period. Both sides still trying to figure each other out here in the final 20 minutes of action. Carolina a 4-3 lead. 14.07 to go in the third. Back to the annex after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Four to three, Carolina in front over Columbus. 
We approach 14 minutes to go here in the third period. In this third period, both sides getting some looks early on. Neither side been able to find anything. Columbus out shooting Carolina in this third period, three to one on our contact LLC. Shots on goal, Tranker. Columbus with 31 shots, Carolina with 24. After Columbus outshot Carolina 18-11 in the first period, then Carolina out shooting Columbus 12 to 10 there in the second. They're doing some ice maintenance. Paul Jackson right there on the ice. So in this third period, Carolina, they had a power play opportunity, couldn't find anything. After Carson Andreoli was called for an interference. They continue to do ice maintenance over on the far side. Don't forget, coming up next weekend, next presentation of Carolina Thunderbirds hockey will be next Friday evening back here at home. Carolina and Port Huron for the fifth time this season. They play Friday at 7.35, and then they play on Saturday at 6.05. Pre-game coverage starts 30 minutes before each game here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. The next Coach Harry show, the first one of 2024, won't be this Tuesday. It won't be on the second, but will rather be on the ninth. Live from Earl's in Winston-Salem, starting at 7 p.m. Join myself and the head coach, Steve Harrison, at Earl's. As we talk about what is a pretty big and interesting few weeks since the last time we chatted back at King's Cram Shack. Back right before the holiday season. That following week, though, on the 16th, there will be no Coach Harry show as Carolina and Columbus playing a Wednesday night down at the Columbus Civic Center. So another week off for the Coach Harry show on the 16th, but then good to go on the rest of the way. Looks like they got the ice figured out over on the far side. Like a little chunk came out of it. And the faceoff comes all the way down to the defensive zone for Carolina. It comes to the left of Mario Cavalieri. Here with 14.07 to go in the third period in Carolina, a 4 to 3 lead. It'll be Petrantonio and Keplinger in for the draw to the left of the netminder. Keplinger wins the draw into the corner. Bioni chasing after Andrioli on his bank. Trying to deflect it up to Baker. Gets poked along at the point. Ford steps through. And then Petrantonio tangled up. It goes through the skates of Popoff. Is whacking at it. Hand goes up. And another man goes down. And as Popoff looks like he got hit high. And the door swings open. And Josh Keplinger is going to be heading to the penalty box for a high sticking. And now the penalty kill has to do its job. 13.50 remains, and they call it a double minor once again. They already called a double minor for high sticking on Mario Cavalieri back towards the end of the first period. And now Josh Keplinger in the box for the next four minutes. And a Carolina team that's already been short-staffed all weekend. Guys that have been on the ice for quite a while have to go to work here. Back underway. Here's Doe centering pass, and they score. Alex Sorjahan on the deflection in front gets his seventh of the year. And with 13.45 to go here in the third period, we are tied up at four. And Mario Cavalieri slow getting up. Now passes Crease. Columbus stays on the power play for the next two minutes. We'll settle in. We got 13.45 to go. We got a tie game once again. Columbus still on the power play. They tangle up at the blue line. Puck bouncing around. Here's Storja on his shot. Deflected high off the glass. Moore goes down. Hand goes up. And it's going to be five on three. Moore and Cavalieri chatting. Moore ran him last night.
We need 10 seconds for station identification here on WTOB. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Thirty-three remains here in the third period in a 4-4 game between Carolina and Columbus. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB on your New Year's Eve as we approach the 11 p.m. hour here on the East Coast. We're back underway. It's five on three. They give it to Mario Cavalieri. Jan Salak serving it. A one-timer deflects near side. They get Cavalieri once again for his second penalty and third here this week. And for interference, centering pass in front goes off a of Cavalieri. Pokes out on the far side. And sent back out to the point. McDonald at the blue line. Holds his shot blocked by Ford. They battle for it at the near dot. McDonald into the corner. Storjahan back out to Petrantonio. Snaps his stick and Clay Keeling clears it all the way down. A minute nine remains of five on three. Then it'll be 13 seconds of five on four. Petrantonio leaves it for more. He holds at the top of the circles. To Sorjahan, near side. He cycles out to the top of the zone. Sends it to Moore. And the McDonald, he waits. Shot, save, rebound. In the slot, Cavalier is able to find it. And he smothers it. With 12.34 to go here in the third. Cavalier, a good save there. Faceoff comes to his right with 49 seconds remaining on the five on three. Ford. Bioni and Farmer, Pastuk and Keeley were trying to get out. They said they were too late to change. Wickline in for the draw against Ford to the right of Cavalieri. Sent back out to the point. Jemayev, he holds. It's the far side, Shinkruk. Over to Wickline. Wickline holding. Brings it back out to Shinkruk. Cross ice to Jemayev and into the near corner to Hunter. Here's Jemayev. Cross ice. Shinkruk winds and fires and a save by Cavalier. He got the blocker there. Farmer pokes it back out to the point. Slahetka darts over and keeps it in. Slahetka sends it far corner. Wickline holds to Slahetka. One timer blocked by Farmer. He pokes it over to the far half. Horse, they battle for it. It's out to Shinkruk. 17 to go on the five on three. Far corner. It goes off with a stick of Wickline. High off of the glass. And this one's whacked all the way back down by James Farmer. Great shift there from James Farmer as he's able to clear it. But now here comes Columbus the other way with four seconds left to go. Taking the puck from Shinkrux, Jemayev. Out of the box, Josh Keplinger. Five on four for 10 seconds with 11.42 left to go here in the third period. Hunter a shot, takes the deflection, goes off the top of the glass, rips along the boards. Pestuka clears it down and Carolina kills off the penalty. Salak out of the box, back to five on five action. A missed opportunity there for Columbus. Crowd starting to get into it, trying to will this Thunderbirds team as tired. It's a victory here tonight. This one's whacked all the way down. This is going to be icing. And they wave it off. The near side, Andrioli. It's the attacking zone. Centering pass, no one home. Petrantonio in the far corner. Pokes it along, but he intercepts. Here come the Thunderbirds, two on two. He's got Jan Salak with him. They tangle up over on the far side. No call for interference. Now four guys battle for it in the corner. Bulk, Will, and Batita battling. It pokes out and is lofted to Farmer. Keeps it at the blue line. That's thrown to the ground by Andrioli, and the puck squirts free to the neutral zone. 10.43 remains here in the third period. Four to four, your score. In the final of four in a row between Carolina and Columbus on your New Year's Eve. Off the boards to McDonald, it's dumped in. Cavalier, he went out to get a touch. With ten and a half to go. Should have been icing, or it would have been icing, as McDonald hadn't gotten across the red line. But they whistled it, so it brings a face off to center ice. Valley, Clay Keeley, Gus Ford, Josh Keblinger, Dawson Baker. Five for Carolina with ten and a half to go. Here in period number three. 
Face off is won by Justin McDonald and played back to Carter Shinkrook. Sends it over far side. Ryan Gill backhands it. Moore gets there. Trying to wait out Ford. Leaves it for Shinkrook and sends it right back to him. Behind the cage, Ryan Moore controls. A stretch pass. It's deflected and ricochets behind the cage. Too far for Cavalieri. McDonald, the first one there. Thrown into the boards by Clay Keeley. It's left for Hunter. Dancing on the far side against Mo Valley. Backhands it to Gill at the blue line. He holds, sends one in, and it takes the deflection wide. 9.50 to go here in the third. On the far side, Dawson Baker. Saucers one. Kevlinger chasing after it. Joseph touches it along. It's floated out to the neutral zone. Bioni steps up, knocks it down. Thunderbirds are on side. Here's Bioni trying to center one to Ford. Goes under his stick and ends up in the far corner. Bioni darting back now, trying to get up to uh, Gill. He goes down, and it's left for Hunter. Hunter dispossessed. This pokes free for Farmer, chasing after it. Joseph whacks it all the way back out. Ford takes it at the red line, walks right down Main Street, leaves it for Dumas, a shot, and it's blocking it away. The rebound opportunity goes off the side of the cage from Ford, who almost had his fourth. And now a turnover, Jamea for a shot. Mo Valley blocks it to make up for leaving it right there. Wicklund goes down behind the cage. Jamea battling for it. Mo Valley stepping in. Pokes free to Jan Salak. Salak dumps it in. Peeks out, pop off, chases into the corner. Joseph trying to rattle it along. It's knocked down by Dumas. Salak. Pirouettes his way behind the cage. Salak on the backhand. Holds a man off. Sends it back out to Clay Keeley. He got his first goal last night. Keeley a shot. Gets deflected. Goes high off of the glass here with eight and a half to go in the third period. Tied at four. Carolina and Columbus. You're on New Year's Eve. Dumas goes down behind the play. Gets it to Pastuka though. Dances behind the cage. Pastuka throws it out in front. It comes out far side. Sorjahan whacks it back out to the point. Jamayev trying to clear the zone. Dumas whiffs on a hit. Puck bounces free on the near side. Salak right at the blue line. He's got no reinforcements right now. Him and Popoff battling right there at the line. Comes all the way back to Mo Valley. He'll dump this one in. Sends it high over Taylor Joseph. And ricochets to Josh Petrantonio. Plays it to his defenseman Jordan Popoff. He gets it up to Carson Andrioli. Andrioli, his pass only goes as far as the red line as Viktor Grabenikov trying to get it back in deep. On the near side, Nate Keeley picks the puck up and they dump it in. 7.40 remains here in a tie game in the third period at the Annex. Andrioli across the red line, trying to dance by Grabenikov. Got caught up in his skates, so now Viktor Grabenikov with it on his stick at the red line. He'll just send it in on Joseph. It's saved and it ricochets high into the protective netting. Here is 7.23 remaining in the third period. A classic brewing here between Carolina and Columbus. It's had a little bit of everything here tonight. The scoring, the physicality, and the penalties. We got more to come here from the Annex. And we're back after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Get ready, Winston Sales. Four to four, Carolina and Columbus sign up here. We've reached the final 10 minutes of the third period. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Great to have you along on your New Year's Eve as we're about 52 minutes away from the new year here on the East Coast. The puck that's suspending over center ice getting ready to come down. Question is, this one keeps going the way it is. It still might be going. It's not... It's not a limited overtime here in the regular season. Of course, five minutes of three on three and then a shootout. But you never know, this one has had a little bit of everything tonight. If you like the scoring, you got that. If you like the hits, you got that. If you like the physicality, you got that. And it's all coming down to an entertaining final seven minutes and 23 seconds on the final game of this three and three. Both teams had to travel from Columbus after game one on Friday night. And spent the last two days 
here in Winston-Salem, Carolina, you're at home in front of a sold-out crowd at the Annex, and Gus Ford and Justin McDonald in for the draw to the left, rather the right, of Taylor Joseph. And McDonald might be tossed out again. He's been tossed out a few times here tonight, and he is. And that brings in Ryan Hunter. Shots 34 to 25 in favor of Columbus on our Comtech LLC. Shots on goal. Tracker, Gus Ford upset now. He did not get toss. Instead, he wins the draw. So the point, Justin Peone shot. And saved by Joseph. It's deflected out to the neutral zone. Peone retreats, zips it up to Baker, who dump, tries to dump it in. Run into by Paul Quill. It's played back to Justin Peone, the Moon Township, Pennsylvania native. On the back hands, Yuri Pastuka. More pressuring him, plays it off of the boards. Right to the stick of Kirk Underwood. Bank pass up the far side. McDonald chases after it into the corner. Working against Bioni, they tangle up right in front of the door. Backhand pass comes out near side. Farmer chasing after it with Hunter. And Baker has it. Throws it off the skates and onto the stick of Gus Ford. Dances away from eight. Here's Pastuka over to Ford. A shot takes a deflection as Balkwell blocked it. Baker deflects it. Here's Ford behind the cage on the back end. He's got Underwood all over him. Spins around near side. His shot. Second attempt saved by Joseph. And it's cleared back out. Now it's a foot race here. Movalli trying to get back. Hunter picks it up on the forehand. Columbus going off for a change. Movalli closes the angle and leaves it for Clay Keeley with 6.08 left to go in the third period. Carolina and Columbus. And another classic, Carolina leading the season series three games to two. Columbus, though, three points clear in the Continental Division. Three points here. Cavalieri got hit behind the play, and the hand goes up. A delayed penalty coming up for Carolina. Salak on the back end. As Ford comes out as the extra man, Dumas. Plays it for Keblinger. Behind the net, plays a bank pass back out to Clay Keeley. Cross ice, here's Mo Valley. His shot gets deflected and goes in the protective netting. Here with 5.37 remaining in the third period. But Carolina going to another Little Italy power play as Cody Wickline is going to be called for goaltender interference. Carolina two for five on the power play here tonight. Both goals from Gus Ford, who's in for the draw against Josh Petrantonio to the left of Taylor Joseph. They tangle up. Paul Quill gets the puck, and he rattles it all the way down. So now they chase after it. Petrantonio is the first one there. Loses an edge in the near corner. He's got Pastuka and Baker closing on him. Pastuka trying to angle him off. Baker gets tangled up, goes down in the corner. Keplinger gets his pocket picked right in front of the net on the far side. A shot sails high from Sequoia Swan. 25 seconds in to the goalie interference against Cody Wickland. Carolina still without a shot on this power play. Jan Salak brings it in. Run into by Nathan Bulk will. Swan trying to clear. Salak keeps it though in the corner. Sends it to Ford. Gets it right back to Salak. Salak with Bulk will on him. Fends him off. Sends it back out to the point. Pestuka a quick pass to Keplinger in the far corner. Wax it along. Salak gets a touch. Ford trying to get out to Baker. He does on the second chance. Baker waits. He shoots. He scores! A snipe from Dawson Baker with 4.42 remaining in the third. Gives Carolina the lead once again. It's 5-4. His second of the weekend and his 13th here this year for Dawson Baker. Comes on the power play. Carolina with three power play goals here tonight. And now at 442. Left to go. Back underway after the riddle tractor goal from Dawson Baker. Mario Cavalieri behind the cage, leaves it for Justin Bioni. Sends it up the near side. But Sita, a loser. Shinkaro 
Sends it over to Slahetka. He dumps it in at the red line. Cavalieri gloves. And he covers with 4.20 to go here in the third period. Dawson Baker. But the assist from Gus Ford and Jan Salak have Carolina in front once again. Here with 4.20 left to go on New Year's Eve. Carolina the 5-4 lead. The thrilling conclusion coming up on the other side of this timeout. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hall Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Dawson Baker has Carolina in front on his power play goal, his 13th of the year and his second of the weekend, coming at the 15-17 mark to give Carolina the 5-4 lead with 4.20 remaining here in the third period. This game has gone back and forth all night. One thing, though, Carolina has never trailed. And now they're trying to close this out and move back into a tie for first in the Continental Division with this Columbus River Dragon squad. It's been a fun New Year's Eve here at the Enix. An action-packed game. And now Carolina trying to finish this one off. Gus Ford already a hat-trick here tonight. He had a hat-trick before he even reached the midway point of this game. Alexander Jemayev. He has two here tonight. They did fix that original goal that was given to Jordan Popoff. We're back underway with 4.20 remaining. Wick line in the near corner in the attacking zone of Columbus. Throws it back out. Puck bouncing around. Keeley throws it out. And it comes to the point. Jamea rattles it to Storjahan in the slot. Wick line hit shot blocked in front. Keeley disposed of man. That was Slahetka right in front of Cavalieri. Bioni and Storjahan bang on the near side. And Clay Keeley gets a touch to Dawson Baker. Right now has the game winner here with 3.50 remaining in the third period. Carolina short manned all weekend. Trying to show they have the legs. Here tonight. On the far side. Jemayev has it knocked away. Pestuka, quick touch into the corner. Doe on the near side. Has it poked away. Salak. Back out to the point. Mavali, a quick shot on one off the skate of Pasuka and rang up against the board, against the pipes. And it's cleared back out and through the legs of Mavali as Columbus goes off for a change with 3.15 remaining here in the third period. Too much on it for Dumas. And it's lofted out of play. Now it, the stoppage calling for the trainers or the medics uh, come over on the near side. So it looks like something happened in the crowd here, and they're calling trainers and the medics over. The officials are trying to get the game back underway, but a scary sight here at the end. It's not sure what happened. It was going on while the game was in action. With 3.09 to go here in the third period, Carolina's going to go on a power play. Ryan Hunter to the penalty box. And I believe Steve Harrison has used the timeout.
called it a delay of game. So Ryan Hunter is going to be serving it. Carolina a five to four lead here in the third period. Trying to close this one out here tonight and take all three points. Face off in the attacking zone for Carolina as they are still tending to the fan. They're down on the near side. Hope everything is all right. We're back to action. Carolina is three for six on the power play once again. Back underway here with 3.05 left to go here in the third period. Carolina a five to four lead. And Dawson Baker. Sends it to Gus Ford at the top of the circles. Ford, he holds. A quick shot, it's blocked. Clearing attempt. It's knocked into the half board. Salak into the Keplinger in the corner. Balkwell tries to clear and only goes as far as Gus Ford though. Ford to Baker on the backhand. Sends it to Salak. Here's Baker. Saucers it over far side. Ford far side. Salak had to go through. Comes to Baker though. His shot save and then Joseph's able to corral the rebound here with 2.32 remaining here in the third period. So Carolina win here tonight. They would get all three points in regulation. And a face off to the left. McDonald and Ford both in for the draw. It's one to Slahetka. Salak picks it up though. Salak near side. He holds. Spins away from Shinkrook. Backhands it over far side. Keplinger back out to Ford at the point. Kicks it over to Pastuka. His pass goes over the stick of Dawson Baker. Keplinger battling for it on the far side. Slahetka and Salak go down behind the cage. Justin McDonald picks it up with a minute to go. On the man advantage for Carolina, McDonald dancing in far side, a shot sails wide here with two minutes to go in the third period. Slahetka has it poked away, Pastuka darting after it, but Joseph who goes down to a knee and he plays it high off of the glass. Ford into the attacking zone, he holds a shot, it's blocked by Shinkrook, picking up the rebound though is Nate Keeley. He forgot the puck in the corner, Slahetka takes it, it's lofted all the way down towards Mario Cavalieri. Hunter still in the box, so the delay a game with 27 seconds left to go. On the man advantage for Carolina and 90 seconds to go here in regulation. Carolina, a five to four lead over the Thunderbirds. Batita into the attacking zone, sends it far side. A quick shot, save, rebound, comes out in front. Dumas couldn't get a stick to it after his initial shot. Nate Keeley battling on the far side. Again, Storjohn, it's taken away. Wickline quickly with three seconds and two. We're back to five on five. A quick turnover. Petita, Joseph trying to make his way to the bench. Now he has to retreat as Nate Keeley walks in. He dumps this one in here. With 60 seconds to go on New Year's Eve. Carolina, five to four lead here over the River Dragons. Buck ricocheting around. Paul Quill backhands it. Goes past Wickline in the neutral zone. Nate Keeley just dumps it back in. Underwood on the far side. As Joseph still has not been able to leave his cage yet. They can't get over the red line. 39 seconds remain. Shinkura dances in. Nice shot. Sails high. There goes Joseph to the bench. Extra man on. Slahetka sends one high and wide. Sorjan picks up the puck with 27 seconds left to go. Net is empty for Columbus. Slahetka, a Shenry pass. Deflected in front. Rebound trickles wide on the far side. It's thrown back out. Jemayev can't get to it. It comes back out to the neutral zone with 15 to go. One last opportunity. Salak knocks it back all the way down into the attacking zone. Shinkarut back to pick it up. He has to send one all the way down with five seconds and four. Cavalieri out of his crease. He holds it with one second in Carolina. Short-handed all weekend. Takes a 5-4 victory here on New Year's Eve at the Annex.
What an effort from the Carolina Thunderbirds. Here on the back end of a three and three. Injuries plaguing them all weekend. New guys coming in on the weekend. And they come away with a five to four win here tonight. Dawson Baker gets the game winner at the 15-17 mark of the third period. And Carolina moves back into a tie for first in the Continental Division with the Columbus River Dragons. A great night here at the Annex. And Thunderbirds post game starts next. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee It Up Indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Scott Brandon with DS Brandon Plumbing. I have 30 years of plumbing experience in the triad. DSBPCO at triad.rr.com. Proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. Go Birds. Back here in Winston-Salem, Carolina victorious here on New Year's Eve here at home. A 5-4 to four heart stopping win here tonight as Carolina gets a goal from Dawson Baker with at the 15-17 mark to be able to take the victory here tonight and take all three points here over the Columbus River Dragons this evening. Carolina. Here tonight, led by Gus Ford, who had a hat trick this evening. Dawson Baker had four points as well with a goal and three assists and a game-winning goal. Jan Salak, three points for him as well. As tonight, a great night here as Carolina moves back into a tie for first place in the Continental Division. They split this three and three set, or this four game stretch here across the holidays against Columbus that started last Saturday here at the Annex. Carolina took game one, then Columbus handed Carolina two straight losses for the first time this year. And Carolina, who only had 12 the last two nights. And Carolina gets the win here this evening. So Carolina victorious here tonight by a score of five to four here with just about 33 minutes left until the new year. We'll take a timeout and we'll wrap this one up on the other side of this timeout. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hi, I'm Wake Wagner with Wagner Appliance, proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds! My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! Hi, I'm Stuart with Fiddlin' Fish Brewing Company here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Been proud to be the official craft beer of Carolina Thunderbirds since 2018. Be sure to find us on draft or in cans at the games or come down and see us for here in downtown Winston-Salem. Go Birds!
Carolina wins this one here tonight on New Year's Eve by a final score of five to four. Your three stars of the evening with a goal and two assists. Jan Salat gets the third star honors with a goal and three assists and four points on the night. Our second star is Dawson Baker who had the game winner. And then Gus Ford with a hat trick and an assist with four points is the first star of the evening. Carolina outshot 34 to 31 on our contact LLC shots on goal tracker. Gus Ford. He had the hat trick. Alexander Jameev, he had two. Austin Doe had a goal, as well as Alex Storjahan. Jan Salak a goal, and Dawson Baker, the game winner. Gives Carolina all three points here this evening as they move back into a tie with 47 points with the Columbus River Dragons at the top of the Continental Division. Carolina improves to 17-5, 17-5-0 on the year. Columbus drops to 15-3-2. Both teams tied at the top of the Continental Division. And now they will see each other once again coming up on January 17th. That's a special Wednesday game down in Columbus. Next time the Thunderbirds are in action are coming up next Friday. And it's on January 5th. It will be a 7.35 p.m. puck drop against the Port here on Prowlers. Carolina leading the season series four games to none there in that one. A two-game set against the Prowlers before Whitville, rather Blue Ridge, is here on the Thursday, the 11th. And then Carolina, they end up being able to take MLK weekend off and rest the legs. They need it here after this weekend. But Carolina victorious here tonight. It's a 7.35 p.m. puck drop coming up next Friday here at the Annex of pregame coverage starting at 7.05. A fun weekend, a tiring weekend. And Carolina able to come away with a tie heading into more division action next weekend. From my production crew here at the Annex. Dylan Klein, Caleb Blazer, Haley Foster, and Logan Allen. And for our producer, Rick O'Neill, the radio guy, back in our WTOB studios. I'm Brendan Riley saying so long from Winston Sale. A very merry, happy new year, and welcome into 2024 here in just 29 minutes. Puck drop getting ready to come up, the ceremonial puck drop here on New Year's Eve at the Annex. But that'll do it for us here on New Year's Eve. Hope you enjoyed it all weekend long. And we'll talk to you coming up on Friday. Enjoy the new year and enjoy 2024. More Thunderbirds hockey coming up next Friday. This has been Thunderbirds.